We're live. This is New York. Joe, it's been like it's been like two weeks since we like talked personally. We are the New York Knicks. Yeah, no. Well, I was the New York Knicks. The Joe, I can't believe we're like really good friends now, and like we were screaming at each other like three months ago. It just took us a while to have an understanding of one another, Ange. Yeah, you're an asshole. I'm an asshole, and it works out. Then he's the biggest asshole, and then that's the name of the game. That's exactly how I wanted this to start for you to say the, the a-hole like three times in the first 20 seconds. Yeah, usually getting our things. Y'all cut know off. what today is. This it's live stream himself. Y'all know it's what today the, is. It's live stream, baby. For We're building up. Going. We're building up. We're gonna have our first open panel today, which is the most exciting part, I think. Yeah, fill them in on everything going on today, Joe. Not necessarily for me, but it's exciting for everyone else. Do I post the link to this website for them to get on? Right, do that in there. I'm gonna add that up. There we go. I'm gonna add the little little click on thing for people to join open panel. Everyone tuning in uh, as we build up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are doing our first open panel today because we've been asking that a couple times. Next morning, Bruce, shout out to them. They do open panel. Uh, I know there's a couple other places to do open panel. Obviously, we all probably listen to and love KFTV. They do the calls for their Discord. So I just think there's people that probably want to talk to us. We're going to let them actually join. The link is going to be in the chat. We're going to post it every, every 30 minutes. Make sure it's constantly there. We got Ange here, Vince in the background. Mill's going to be on in a little bit. Um, everyone on Instagram, make sure you come over to YouTube. That way we can actually get you involved. You can do the super chat. You can join the giveaway. That's the other thing we're doing, as you can see on camera. It says on the right-hand side, super chat giveaways. We're giving away both the BK flag that I just had up. Ange wanted me to th Show uh, that shit, wanted Joe. Wanted me to thumbtack this Joey's, to my wall. You're not getting Joey's smelly version. You're getting a brand new one. This is also new. It's just a little wrinkly. I haven't put it up yet. So I think like better. this is like one of those products that people like have to see in person, like in order to like really appreciate like the size and just how cool it actually is. Like this is one of those products. Um, it's not like like our t-shirts. Our t-shirts are just fire. Like uh, like a flag. Like you kind of got to just like see that shit in order to buy it. You gotta yeah. love it. I just I want to let everybody know, right? So as you see the rules on the side here, two dollars gets you one entry, five dollars gets you three entries, ten dollars gets you seven entries. I will be adding your names to this spinning wheel. So there's full transparency here. You're gonna see your name on that real wheel when you you know donate Joey a little super chats and then and just to make back. sure we never get your name taken off the wheel, Vin, do you want to show them what the second layout is for when we add an open panel person? As you can see, this flag is gonna do a little disappearing act like Harry Houdini. Like Dua Lipa singing about Harry Houdini. And then that's where your face goes, and the flag joins the little hoodie over here. So that way, the spinning wheel of death is always going to be on there. Is it the spinning wheel of death or the spinning wheel of wins, baby? Like like Jameis Winston, we got to eat some W's. Ange, while we're waiting for anyone to join us or do anything, how do you love these Knicks, man? OG and Anobi is 81-1 as a Nick right now. <laughs> Um, Joe, it's like all, all I've been thinking about the past two days is like, what was my re initial reaction? Like I asked you like, like yesterday, like what was like my initial reaction to when I signed? So when the Knicks signed Jalen Brunson, I had no fucking thoughts, Joe. I just wanted to like see it through. Like, how did I feel when this guy signed for a hundred million dollars trying to save the Knicks? Like, I don't think I had like any expectations at all. Right. I just knew there was just a personal connection between the front office, between Thibodeau and Jalen Brunson. And if there was anything like this seems to be like when it comes to being like the perfect match between player, coach, GM fit, like there's no place else that Jalen Brunson could have gone to where he had this type of reduction. Everything is just falling into the place at the right time. Their special team. Jalen Brunson's a fucking special player. And I love like what's most important to me um, because I come from like a hectic environment dealing with daily every day at family business. Um, the camaraderie of this team is so fucking cool. And it just brings me so much joy to watch. Like you see Josh Hart, like while Jalen Brunson's doing a post game empty, he's like bah! doing a go go goat sounds. I can't do it too well, but. That to me is just so fucking cool. That Yo, what got was that, that sound? Bah. <laughs> was that better? Your sheepdog, bro. Just keep going. Keep going. Yeah, it was just uh, the camaraderie of the team is really nice. I always loved. Uh, uh, I used to be a basketball player, obviously. 
you know, at the amateur level and just like the talking shit in the locker rooms, like they got all that. So it's just so nice to see. It really is. It really is. How much have you been enjoying the roommates podcast? Cause I feel like you've probably listened to at least three of the four episodes. Jo- so okay. I'm going to go a little deeper. Okay. You got me, Joe. You hit, you hit it on the nose. I know I'm having a conversation with my friend Taylor yesterday, right? Or two days ago, something like that. We were going out and I'm thinking about the Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart podcast. And I'm thinking about like watching how they interacted with Action Bronson and how the conversation flows. It's just so fucking cool. Like anybody could get on that chair. And because of like the connection between Josh and Jalen, like you could put anybody in that chair. It's going to be a fucking cool conversation. It's going to be a good time. Everybody's going to laugh. It's going to be cool. And I was just thinking about like me and my friend Taylor, like we have that same kind of vibe. Like anybody could just chime in or get into the conversation. It'll flow naturally. It might be some crazy shit said. Nobody will take it personally. That fucking podcast is golden. And I love how they're getting guys like Action Brunson, real Queens, New York dudes on ben it. And Stiller, loved that. And Stiller, loved that. Um, Julius Randle's next, actually, guys. That's going to be a good episode. They That's going to be fucking awesome, bro. We get to ask him about why he's not back yet from his shoulder that's popping in and out of socket. Guys, you want to know a secret? I can pop my shoulder in and out of socket at will. Let's see if you can hear it. Yeah, but Joey, you, you can't put up. 30 points on any given night so uh, I, I could man i could i could be some bullious out there just put me out there with a bunch of nine-year-olds i'll put up 30 you didn't have to say they'd be nba players i mean i could do it though you guys want to run back the rules we got 100 people in here now you're, put, you're putting up 30 on jalen brunson's son or what oh yeah does jalen brunson julius Randall's, son, julius Randall's son i'm sorry his six-year-old yeah, yeah. by the time he's 10 now i'm that done he's already six foot tall joe no he's not he's like 4 11 get the gtfo uh, we got one ten in the chat. We got one ten watching us right now. Uh, Hundred on Twitter, eleven on YouTube. If a lot of you Twitter guys want to come over to YouTube, actually, we're doing the super chat giveaway. Uh, we're gonna be doing two dollars for one entry, five dollars for three entries, ten dollars for seven entries. So the more you get, you always get an extra one on top. Uh, we're the first thing we're giving away is the BKE flag, as you guys can all see. I also have one right behind me, just to show you all what this looks like in person. This is a very big flag. This Guys, is not there, there, there's not going to be many opportunities to get this kind of merch that's this fucking cool and so in touch with the fandom of the of the culture of Knicks basketball. There's not going to be many more opportunities like this. So join now. Spend a dollar. Spend, I'm sorry, spend $2. Spend $5. This is your chance to get something you really might win, special. Honestly. You might win really? if you're the only one that donates. So just yeah, go now. Just throwing it out there. And so uh, JJ posts in the chat who uh, who actually I talk to a lot on the Dope Soul podcast. Like he's one of the people that moderates for them, I'm pretty sure. And we literally will spend half the podcast talking about future Knicks draft picks that won't get drafted. And then half the podcast talking about half their live stream talking about the Jets. So we're not doing anything related to the Knicks on there, even though it's a Knicks stream. Um, OG is out tonight. It officially got announced 30 minutes ago. So what's happening in this Warriors game later on? Knicks aren't going to be able to. Knicks aren't going to be probably going to be able to win this game. Uh, win this game. I, we get, just we're giving up 160 points. Unfortunately, a Steph buck Curry. 60, man, you're a Josh Hart stan. You don't think Josh Hart can still help uh, out out there? I, Joe, OG's OG's becoming that important to the team. Like it's it's the impact that he has on this team on both sides of the ball. Man, it's contagious. Um, it just works. Ball flows. He's everywhere on the court, Joe. He's fucking everywhere. Yeah, he really is. He really, he really is. Eugenio goes star Joey and let's see. I think that'd be a great idea. I obviously also have a seven foot two wingspan. I can dunk without barely moving. So I mean, we'll be good to go, baby. Let me tell Joe, you. Joe, also, um, in order for anybody to give super chats, they have to be on YouTube, correct? You do have to be on YouTube. We don't have it set that you have to be a uh, subscriber to actually comment, which is a good thing. I mean, I would rather you all subscribe, obviously hit the thumbs up, do all that good stuff. Helps us out, helps the channel out. The more we can, the more we can do, the more we show we can do, the more content we can possibly make. And how much do we really want to talk basketball versus sharing you guys our lives? You know, like we're two bald guys just chopping up right now. Vin gets to hang out with us in the background. No one knows he has a big ass ponytail, but you'll never see it because he's never on camera. And Mill's going to be on a little bit. Ange, what I really want to actually ask you though, because we can get to the Warriors game in a little bit for real. Uh, 
Hopefully Steph doesn't drop 40 and hopefully we can actually pull off the upset and get another W. I'm pretty sure the line moved down to like six and a half or seven now. Once, uh, once FanDuel got sniffed that OG was going to be out about an hour ago. But, but Keon Lewis, man. Keon Ellis, Keon Ellis. Wow, I just p- p- combined Keon, Kira Lewis and Keon Ellis into one player. Keon Ellis, a really good young NBA defender. Actually helped shut down Brunson for part of the last three minutes of that game. Brunson was taking early pull-up threes. They were bad shots. And then the f- what might be the funniest moment of the year. Last year it was Alex Caruso falling on his ass. This year it's Jalen Brunson pointing one way and going the other way. Some road roar, wily coyote stuff. Little meep meep, I'm out of here. Little Tweety Bird, Tom and Jerry. Little Sylvester the cat. Little little whatever you want to call it. The guy's remote turned off at the most pivotal moment of the game. Have you ever seen a more embarrassing version of a guy being introduced to the national media? Because the, the Kings aren't on TV a lot, national TV wise. He was so worried about everything else besides the best player on the floor. The best player on the floor was dribbling the basketball for a few seconds. And all he was worried about was that screen that was coming that did not actually come. And by the time you know it, Jalen Brunson was Euro step layup. Ball was in a basket. He made himself look like a fool. But it was nice to see him. The next day at morning shoot around, which we did post um, his interview, they asked him about that clip that kind of went viral and he was really humble about it. And he spoke very highly of Jalen Brunson and said how he offers a lot of things or he's, you know, different than a lot of the guys that he's used to guarding. Jalen Brunson offers something different to this game. He's in control of the ball at all times. So it was nice to see him be humble about it and not just like, shit on Jalen Brunson, whatever, for being lucky or making the right play at the right time. Like he was really like, okay, it's kind of a learning experience for him. So that was cool to see. That was cool. That was, it was cool to see for sure. Um, I do. I watched the, I watched the interview. I liked the cut that you do. And I like how you started adding the green letters to it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's very Hulk. Like it's like if Hulk and Legos like combined into one, you know? Well, yeah, I only started doing that because like Vinny's video said, just be a little different to me. That's just a little bit different. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I like it. I like it. But uh, what I like about his interview is he just repeating the same thing over and over again. You can tell tell he's not the one that's actually used to getting a lot of talk or like getting a lot of post game interviews or anything like that. So he honestly seemed like a kid that was answering a question in class for the first time. And he just said the same thing over and over again. Yeah. 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 But uh, nice young player. Um, but once again, Joe, best player on the floor was Jalen Brunson. Facts. It really was. Actually, speaking of which, uh, we got our first super chat. Nature and Sports, $5. Thank you, man. Uh, appreciate it. Imagine how sad all the Kings fans are knowing that Brunson clears Fox. First, Nature and Sports, now that you're in, you got three entries into the giveaway. Maybe you can win a flag. Uh, maybe you can win the Knicks at hoodie. Uh, imagine how sad all the Kings fans are knowing that Brunson clears Fox. And last year, we actually made some videos. Like, I feel like there was a lot of like Brunson, Fox, and Jamal Murray, you know? Like, they all, they're all kind of inter- not interchangeable in like play style, but definitely skill set. They all like would be between the third and tenth, like the third and eighth best NBA guard in the league if you were talking about point guard only. Uh, now, Brunson's honestly moving his way up to two or one. So that's awesome for us as Knicks fans, but last year that wasn't the case yet. Uh, and I believe that if you gave Nikola Jokic any of the three, he could win a title. <laughs> so that helps there. But dude, Jalen Brunson in that game, 42 points. Supposedly ahead in the MVP race, Demonis Sabonis, 21 points. Supposedly a better point guard as of last year, De'Aaron Fox, 20 points. He outscored them by himself, 42 to 41. And put the as we've said, put the game on ice, made the clutch shots when he needed to, went 5 of 10 from three. Shot over 60% from the field. The, the man was on on one, on two, on three. He was on it all. Like, I think if Jalen Brunson goes into every battle like this, which I think he does a lot of the time, but he sees guys like De'Aaron Fox and Jamal Murray because he knows what the re- rhetoric was last year. And he's just like, I don't, I'm going to make our team win. I care about winning first and foremost, but I'm also going to show the whole world that you are in fact going to 
be worse than me and everyone on this stage is going to see it. Tell me what yeah. you think. Yeah, I think um, he plays it off very well in interviews like he doesn't care. Go ahead, Joe. You want to shout that out? That's fine. Eugenio, $2 super sticker. Thank you, man. Welcome to the giveaway. You got your first century. Let's um, go. I think he plays it off like it doesn't bother him. But I think deep down, it's like it's kind of what has drived him his whole life is that people say he's too short. People say he's not athletic enough. You know, there's always, oh, Jay Brent's is good at this, but, you know, and we're coming to that point where it's like Jalen Brunson is a top 15 player in the league at this point, right? Like he he's still in the prime of his career. He's obviously super motivated. He obviously plays for the biggest, one of the biggest franchise in all of sports. So he has these little people, so to say, peons in, in the basketball world that like to throw little shades of gray at him. And Facts. deep down, that is just, that pot is boiling, Joe. And like you said, when he matches up against these guys, like a Darian Fox, like a Tyrese Hallenburn, like a Jamal Murray, like the guys who are supposedly on the same level with him, he just picks his play up, like, exponentially. Is that the correct word, Joe, or I'm using it wrong? I, I love the way you use that. Yeah, it makes sense I watched, um, I was in the dictionary a few minutes before this game, just looking at some interesting words. Guys, fun fact about Angela. I don't know if it's true or not, but he told me he won a spelling bee in third grade by spelling the word encyclopedia as his last word. That's so true, Joe. Him? I don't know. I swear to God, <laughs> E-N-C-Y-C-L-O-P-E-D-I-A. I say it at the same <laughs> speed. Every time I talk about the story, I say the word and it's always at the same speed joe encyclopedia and you, got, and you got footage of this or this is like the 100 point game no it's just made up you know it's just <laughs> made up shit <laughs> ap what up man he says that's why i think the nba needs to create two mvps one in the west one in the east it can't be the same five guys winning every year more players need to be recognized yeah, but I, mean, I, I, the, last I worth, the last two or three years it would have been jo joel Embiid and nikola Jokic in both conferences so i joe you're playing in one league one MVP. No, I like, uh, I, yeah, I agree with you. You know how like the NFL does, uh, offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year and the MVP. So I would be cool if they did like the MVP, like the number one and then best player in the East, best player in the West is like the Joe, two. Joe, the MVP is not the most of the time, just in the past recent years. Isn't the MVP the best offensive player anyway? Yeah, no, I mean, that's what it is almost every single time. Defense doesn't matter almost at all for this. I'm saying to give second place because, you know, how MVP in the NFL always goes to a quarterback, but then they make the offensive player of the year be another guy and the defensive player of the year obviously be a defender just to get let like let the guy in second place be recognized. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, Nikola Jokic might win his third and what four years right now. And the like. SGA yeah, and, and he doesn't Doncic give a shit both, about and he doesn't give a shit about basketball for some reason. Right. Like. And SGA and Luka Doncic are both <laughs> way there for first, second, third. You know what I mean? And it's like it'd just be nice for them to start getting the recognition that they're gonna end up getting. Uh Finest Bishop goes a lot of WNBA hate on the Knicks. Interesting. What uh what the oh Candace yeah, Parker. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sick of Candace Parker. She makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah. She makes me sick. Yeah, like like bro, my gut. Like it's getting very healthy because I've been drinking these prebiotic soda. No, I'm not sponsored by Olipop, but there's something like if you take this Bishop's bro, there's something just right here, Joe, like in my gut, if that's where my gut is, yeah. that's just like boiling. And it's just Candace Parker, man. She just gets something rumbling in there, bro. She pisses me the fuck off, bro. Excuse my language. Yeah, dude. I mean, the two of them, Stephen A. Smith, I just, I, I can't even. Like why do we have like why can't like we Kendrick Perkin, Perkins man and Zach Lowe and Bill Bill Simmons are giving Nick, uh, Jalen Brunson credit now like Bill Simmons Bill by the way Bill Simmons on his last podcast last night with Rosillo he's like like making it sound like a hot take that Jalen Brunson's on the second All NBA team it's not a hot take this it's clear as day at this point between like guys can't even qualify now Donovan Mitchell's not even qualifiable like there's a couple other guys that lost their yeah I think that's gonna change that's gonna change though Joe I think they're, they're gonna change like the criteria or something. I don't know, man. I like this, that you have to actually play to get there. I don't like how they're connected to their contracts. Because if Halliburton doesn't make... Halliburton, if he makes the All-NBA team, his max eligibility is $245 million. If he doesn't make it, it's $204 million. And speaking of Tyrese Halliburton, for a guy that might lose $41 million, I'm sorry, man. I don't feel bad. You make over $200 million and you're evil. You're a Knicks hater. You're not Reggie Miller. You're whack. I hate you. 
Yo, Joe, isn't it crazy? Is it is it a crazy that like us Nick fans like hate Tyrese Halliburton? Like we hate all these guys that like are enemies. Bro, I hate the Pacers, the Heat, and the Celtics. If you're on those three teams, I hate you. That's it. Yeah, but Joe, you see, like, like Jalen Brunson was at the All Star game, and like Jalen Brunson gets along with Tyrese Halliburton. They like they get along, bro. And like us as fans are like, I know, but like it's crazy because from a fan perspective, we're like. You know, F that guy, you know, he could go, you know, throw him in the sewer, throw him in the fucking Jamaica Bay. Like, and it's just like, you see them on the court at an all, at the all-star game. And it's just like, they're boys and we hate them. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton over his last, uh, however many games since he's come back from this hamstring injury and he rushed himself back to get the 20 plus minutes to keep qualifying for all NBA. So he wouldn't miss the 17 games of eligibility. Uh, 14 points, one of nine from three. 17 points, 1 of 6 from 3. 18 points, 2 of 6 from 3. 20 points, 1 of 6 from 3. 23 points, 2 of 7 from 3. 19 points, 3 of 10 from 3. 12 points, 0 for 6. 0 points, 0 for 6. This man over the last three weeks has shot below 30% from the three-point line and is averaging, like, eight off the top of my head, like 18 points a game. So... The I mean, I'm cool with Tyrese Halliburton sucking. I want him to suck for the rest of his career that, since he's never going to be on the next. That'd be awesome. But what do you think about players actually being rushed to, back too soon about because of the 65 games? And the, this dude clearly should have sat out another couple weeks. I think, Ty, I think Tyrese Halliburton like, thinks like the NBA is his show now. Just from like this season, I just seen him all over the social media, tournament. like the antics, the celebration. I seen him at the All Star party after he's singing Drake. So he thinks like this is like the Tyrese Halliburton show, brother. Excuse my, excuse me, dude. This ain't the NBA. Ain't your show, you know. It's just, you could have sat out a few more games, you know. Did what you had to do to recover. You didn't got to be the superhero all the time. Just sit out a few more games. You still got Siakam. Relax, take a few games. I don't know. This isn't the Tyrese. This is the Jalen Brunson show, Joe. Facts. I mean, okay. As of three months ago, man, Tyrese Halliburton. People, a lot of people were saying myself. I mean, I was on the fence. I didn't know which one I wanted to say was really better. Uh, it really changed day to day, week to week. But right now, it ain't. It ain't no contest, man. Brunson clears you, bro. You fucking inspector gadget dressing motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, and he loves that's you know he's trying to attract attention with his with his style and his style his frame for what he's wearing. It's got to change, bro. Maybe go the baggy route. You know, listen if you want to hire me as your like little uh, creative director, I'll do uh, you know I'll buy you some outfits as long as you give me the unlimited money. I'll make you look better. <laughs> than what you look on a daily basis. Give me all your money and I will give you some brother ravioli and BKE merch. No, I'll just buy him mad like Carhartt shirts, all different types of colors. Buy him every- Wait, what was the shoes you were just posting in our chat? You're gonna send him a bunch of those. No, please, please, please. Vinny's trying- We're gonna get Tyrese Halliburton had the first half cab NBA shoe sponsor. Uh, Finest Bishop, he's another WMA player said Brunson's too small. And I don't know if you know the third name, Finest Bishop, but you could uh, let us know who the, the newest Becky Ham is. Becky Hammond, he's probably not Hammond, about. not Parker, because we mentioned both of them. So I don't know if there's another one. Uh, APAP goes, if you're from the 90s, those are definitely the rivals referring to the Celtics Heat and uh, Pacers, but I left out the Bulls. And this comment probably goes a little bit to the age that we both are. Like, we both were really, really little kids, like when Michael Jordan was dominating the league. Like I was born in ninety one, you were born in ninety two. So like we were just seeing it at yeah, the very beginning. Uh, I don't like to WNBA, comment. Yeah, the first WNBA or the first WNBA. The first NBA game I ever watched was um I think game four or game five of the finals, the second time they played the Jazz. And uh, there was a tornado happening in Newburgh, New York, which never happens. I don't know if Vin would remember this. We were six years old. There was a tornado happening in June that year. And uh, yeah, and that's like what was my first introduction to the NBA, WNBA was just watching Michael Jordan like help dominate and win this game. Uh, but by the time I was like 9, 10, 11, when I became a real Knicks fan, like he was out of the league. Then he went to the Wizards. Like I was just starting to tune in. And the Bulls weren't nearly as good. So I didn't see them being like, the nineties Yankees of basketball. You know what I mean? I feel I know you missed it too, obviously. Yeah. No, my first, um, memory of basketball, I was just talking to my dad about this, uh, two, three days ago. Um, it's seven, eight, it's seven 30 AM. I'm in the store. I'm frying rice balls and, um, I'm watching the Larry Johnson four point play. And I remember that 
we just like my dad just bought his house, just moved in basement, no insulation, just bare bones, Joe. And I remember the little TV we had on a little milk crate. Yeah, Vin, I watched basketball games on a milk crate. I came from the mud. Um, Vin is flipping him off on. Off and I remember, there. like, I just remember how electric, like, I don't think I was, like, so emotional about it, the shot, but I just remember that being, like, my first moment, and, like, that was my first emotional connection to the game, that four-point play. I was seven years old. Was I seven? Yeah, 1999, I was seven. The, um the- the grandmama four point play was your first real intro to a basketball. That was that like my awesome. first, I swear that was my first vivid memory. And then I remember, um, when we lost to the Spurs, I don't know which game I was watching, but I was at my aunt's house and we were also watching on, I don't know if you remember Joe, everybody, like all the Italian moms back in the day or all moms in general, they had like the little kitchen TVs they kept while they were cooking or working in the kitchen. Did yeah, you have my, those? Aunt, my, my aunt had one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I remember watching on a little kitchen in the TV, and Tim Duncan and Dave Robinson destroyed us and ma- brought me right back to reality. And basically, it's been reality or the dumpster since then. Yeah, well, mo- way more so the dumpster up until recently. Thank God we actually have. Uh, whoa, 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 don't Jaylen disrespect Boston, Carmelo yeah. Anthony. Don't disrespect Carmelo Anthony, Joseph. I'm telling you I'm right not now. I'm disrespecting Carmelo Anthony. He was never better than LeBron James. Never going to be better than LeBron James. And we traded too much to get him, knowing that we were never going to be better than the Heat. That doesn't mean he wasn't a great player. It doesn't mean he wasn't one of the best Knicks. He wasn't the best Nick of my lifetime, basically. Before, like after Patrick Ewing, and maybe before Jalen Brunson. I'm not taking that away from him, but. Ange, I, I know we have different fandom styles, but like I want rings, man. I don't care what you got to do. You got to get rings. If you overpay for a superstar, that means you don't get a ring. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, but at the core of you, are you like that? Joe, did you grow up a Knicks fan or you grew up a basketball fan? I mean, I watched the Bulls jazz first, like I said, when I was like six, seven years old, the finals that I was on. But like, dude, I mean, I became like a Knicks fan like the same time as you, the finals. And we're, I was eight years old. I'd still watch, I'd watch the Knicks. The but thing is, during my teenage years, I loved, like, I loved watching the NBA as a whole. I didn't always watch the Knicks. So maybe that is part of it. I always watch the best team. Yeah, I that's, like, a, I, I know you watch a lot of teams, but I'm, I was watching Howard Isley and Othello Harrington suck. Yeah, I mean, dude, you're uh, Shandon you're Anderson. Anybody remember Shandon Anderson? Some he, I hated him. Sean he was in the corner, man. He was throwing missiles at the rim. The only my favorite player, like in the two thousands. Anybody remember Frank Williams? Really yeah. crafty point guard. Awesome. Back to the basket. Like, uh, like one of those players that played like Mark Jackson. Real herky jerky. Used his shoulders. Used his body. Crossover. Spin move. Very simple game. And then I went to Chris Duhon, who had like 23 assists in one game, all to David Lee. It's been a fucking roller coaster, dude. And now we got Jalen fucking Brunson. What are we talking about? Uh, Bishop goes, by the way, you were right. It was Becky Hammond. Thank you, Bishop. Um, For the 187 people in here, if you don't see it right in front of you, there's there's a giveaway. Big Nick Energy flag, four foot by six foot. It's a priced at $30, I believe, on our website. I base I really think we're losing money on this product. You have a are. chance, you have a chance to get it for $2. There's or four $5. entries right now. There's you four know entries right There's, now. If you get an entry in there, you have a 20% chance of getting this. That beautiful Nick set hoodie that are that are not this what, one, a new one, by the way, a new one. And Vinny's made that beautiful Nick set hoodie. There's, there's, you know, we always do sales. We always try and give back to the community, whether it's giveaways. Now we're asking just a little back. Eugenio goes, uh, Joe, who else was available at that caliber other than LeBron when we had Melo? So, a great question. Uh, kind of Chris Paul, but not really, because the league literally, he tried to get traded somewhere, and then they vetoed it, and he got sent to the Clippers instead uh, when he was turning to go to the Lakers. So, obviously, the thing is, no one was on LeBron's caliber. When LeBron went to the Heat and made the Heatles, and I think the same way for, the, for when go- Kevin Durant went to Golden State, if you're one of the worst teams in the East or the mid-tier team in the East, don't trade for a star. You gotta, you're gotta. you sitting out those three years. There is no path for you to win the title. Build your assets. Wait. Accumulate. Draft young players. Maybe you find Kawhi Leonard. Maybe you find Giannis Antetokounmpo. Maybe Joe, you find the, a- the NBA was at a different point in that time. It was more trading or signing for the best actually it was more at that it's point. All, it was, it's been trading for the past like almost decade and a half. But it became... At, in that in that era, 2013, like the 2010 to 2000, 
18, 17, 16, 18, whatever. It was more just three a player, three max players, and everybody else vet minimums and one mid level exception. Which is kind of like how the best teams are still built one way or another. It's it's, like, but it doesn't even seem to be sustainable. Like I, I don't, I, I don't believe in that. You method. have the best player. Like Nikola Jokic allows it to be sustainable for the the Nuggets. Like the Nuggets literally have Michael Porter, Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray on maxes. That's it. That's their team. They have Aaron Gordon at like eight, 19, 20 mil. Um, so what we did, we could not mail his fault. Knicks just didn't place a good team around him. So again, so what I was saying is they should have never traded for him at all. If he wanted to come in the off season, actually sign as a free agent and take less money, that would have been on him, him, them to make. I know they said the Nets were kind of making a move for him. I think they ended up backing out. I think that would have been the move to make. But if I was, and the same thing for the, when the Gold State Warriors got, ended up getting KD. If I'm a team in the West and I'm not already one of like, even if I'm one of the best teams, they're going to the finals. Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, Kevin Durant, insert 11 other names here, are going to the NBA Finals, no matter what I do. I'm not going to trade away. Here's three guys. Here's four first-rounders. Yes, I got Russell Westbrook. Ah, we're still by far in second place. Or James Harden. James Harden and CP3 actually got really close to beating them once. Took them to a Game 7. Joe, no, no, James Harden goes in Game 7, though, so that didn't work out that way. Joe, how did I'm you... I'm not making that move. Joe, how did you feel when KD actually went to the Warriors? What was your initial reaction? Uh, as a fan of the NBA, I was sad, man. It just, it literally just felt like here's titles. What about thinking from the player's perspective and just reality of people in general at this time? I'm going to give you my thoughts after. We really, uh, real quick, JJ goes, we really only gave up role players. We didn't offer a ton for Melo, if you think about it. I loved Wilson Chandler. He was nice as hell here. Danilo Gallinari was doing his thing. I thought Raymond Felton, the first stint, was better than Raymond Felton, the second stint, before we gained the extra 15 pounds. And I would have wanted to hang on to those draft picks, and one of the draft picks became Jamal Murray. We didn't, I'm just saying, I wouldn't ever make any trade if I knew there was a super duper team down the block. And I know if I, all of my cap goes to this one player. Then I'm stuck hiring 40 year old Jason Kidd and 38 year old Kurt Thomas and 39 year old Marcus Camby and 34 year old Kenyon Martin. Like, yeah. just not doing it. You know? doing I just wouldn't have done it. Period. Um, and sorry, Ange, what was the what was the question you just asked me? What was your initial reaction? reaction? Yeah, like if you're thinking from his perspective and from, um. <coughs> Just the way people are in general now, like just this generation of humans that is, you know, in this world now, like, how do you think about it? I'm Like I said, I'm going to give you my thoughts after. Dude, I think, uh, I think what's cool now is that even younger players or even the players younger than KD, like they, because social media is so prominent and Twitter is such a big thing. And like, obviously Facebook, Instagram threads, yada, yada, yada. Right. Um, they see all that, and they everyone saw the reaction that Kevin Durant going to the Warriors did. Players were like, oh, my God. And I'm pretty sure if they could have kept going, it would have been, oh, my God, that's unfair. Uh, fans were like, this is total BS. If you're a Warriors fan, it's like, woo, titles. We didn't have to try. Like, you know what I mean? And players now, like, I don't think I'm going to ever see Jalen Brunson and Tyrese Halliburton on the same NBA team. I'm not going to ever see, like... <clears throat> Joel Embiid isn't going to go join Giannis. You know what I mean? Like the best of the best are going to still say at least a little apart. Is the team going to trade Dame to the Bucks? Sure, but he's not signing there. He would go there on his own accord. You could hit this super chat that I'm going to give you my thoughts. Uh, Cart Life, $5, man. Let's go. You got three entries into uh, your flag and hoodie raffle. Personally, if I'm you guys, I hope I, I'm the one. I love yeah, it. Joe, I love. I, my bad, I didn't read it. Uh, grew up watching Knicks, Ewing Knicks. Uh, my childhood fandom totally reawakened this year. So fun catching up with who's who, hoping for an epic playoffs. Car life, you and us both, man. We get Randall and Mitch both back at least eighty percent. This team, this team's got something. Joe, I love. Before I get back to KD, I love talking to people who are grew up in that era because it's a totally different conversation. Like how basketball fans our age are now they're so in touch with um that culture of the knicks the riley the the mason and how tough they were like whenever like i hear stories about like the 90s knicks somebody was telling me recently joe when the knicks were in the playoffs in the 90s going up against the bulls every year going up against the pacers every year the bars were impossible to get to and the energy in there, Joe, no phones, 
Joe, no yeah. social media. Everybody's having a fucking blast. Just locked in. Locked, locked in. in, cheering for the Knicks. Real energy. There was no uh, purpose behind it from the social media side of things. Now it's you go anywhere. It's like, okay, how could I? How could I get content? Right? Like, how could I get get up? It was us just included, pure, man. I mean, us we're, included. Us included. We're part of the included. Call, you know? We are part of the solution. We're giving you your content since you're looking at your phone. You're welcome. Correct. To so I, I, I tell you what, my favorite people to talk to, I have another guy. I actually, Joe, I never said this. I'm scared. There is somebody who I know that was on one of the championship teams that was coming into where I am at daily every once a week. And we talked basketball. He was on one of the Knicks championship teams. But even like the older crowd, the 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 Frazier, oh, there's this one guy, Joe, his name is John. I swear I would love to have him on the podcast, but he's this old man, talks basketballs, like understands the game, the dynamic, the coach, the love talking basketball with old people, man. They give a totally different perspective of the game. By the way, Angelo's not trying to assault anyone. He, old people includes anyone for and he doesn't actually believe anything existed before 1992 that's why he, he was never willing to admit uh, michael jordan's the best player of all time because he never no really joe that's not true that's not true i don't comment on michael jordan guys because i didn't watch him live who was better magic per, or bird listen listen guys i'm gonna just me personally i love the knicks i love the game of basketball I'm not going on YouTube and watching full games of Michael Jordan. I'm not. I'm fucking not, Joe. So I'm, you know what? I'm not going to comment on it. That's that's fair. I respect that. I've watched a couple. I mean, I, I watched. I feel like I watched more highlights and replays growing up. Jay Boogie, what up? Let's go. I have a um, uh, tough day at work. Turn on the YouTube. Got some BKE. Shout out to the family's blessings, health, happiness. Salute, that is salute, awesome. That is that. See, that Love is that is something that is so cool to me because. Any way that we could just make somebody turn a frown into a smile, that just yeah, that's kind of what we do it for. That's awesome. AP goes, yeah, the NBA is going back to the two all star per team. Yes, for yes. the best teams. Yeah, yeah, it's just not. There's no big three. There is no. I mean, the Warriors were a big four for God's sakes. So you have Draymond Green averaging almost a triple double because he doesn't have to, doesn't have to score. Like, I'm just, I'm just like, I know players saw that and they don't want to do that, which I'm just a fan of. I don't want. I don't want super teams. Like I, I like the big two and then you have to figure out the rest. And what's cool with the salary cap is if you want to be the Suns and go into salary cap hell, which also newsflash, one, one of the three players is Bradley Beal and the other one is 36-year-old Kevin Durant. It's not going to work, but besides the point, um, you can go into salary cap hell and ruin your uh, moves and abilities for the next couple of years. That's on you. But for the most part, you can have two max guys. You got to fill out the roster the rest of the way, which I think just makes for a way more fair, competitive, balanced league as a whole. Um, I'm going to get back to the KD thing about that, Joe. Let me yeah. just talk about, um, we're having a live panel, right? So if anybody's interested in joining and talking to us and coming on our show, we want to bring you up. There is a link somewhere right here, somewhere in the comment section on your end that you could just click and join. And when we're ready, we'll bring you up. We'd love to talk hoop with you. Just because we're bald does not mean you have to be bald, but it will help. I'm not going to lie. No. I'm half bald. I, I still got something going on. Don't tell anybody, Joe. Uh, uh, you almost teed me up, man, to just let you let them know your life secret. Uh, yeah. Parrish goes about the mellow move. Uh, Wilson Chandler was injury prone in a pothead. Gallo and Mozgov were big losses. Yo, Mozgov fell off a cliff once he left the Knicks. That yeah. team got overpaid and under underperformed by a lot. Uh, Billups getting hurt was the biggest reason the trade hurt us. What also hurt was us not amnestying Amare. They amnestied Billups after the injury, which I think also was a ruined, terrible move. Like, the NBA gave teams an amnesty clause, which is wild and would never happen again because there were so many teams in cap hell. They gave them recession money is what they basically did. Joe, I mean, if there was an amnesty right now, would the Knicks use it on anybody? No. If no I, they, think, okay. I think it would have been 40 if they didn't deal them, but even who, then they had a trade team option, so no. Who would be a player that would be like amnesty? Jordan like, What's he getting, 110? 120? He's 40 mil a year. At for what? Two, 160? Two or, three, two or three more years after this? Wow. That's the first. You thought about that. That was quick. You knew that answer. I already knew. Yeah, dude. He got benched. He's literally got benched recently. He's the worst contract in the NBA right now. I don't even have to even think about it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. I can't think of any other player. Like, I don't know why my thoughts went to Kevin Durant. They did. That's not a guy who I would 
And it could have been Tobias Harris, but he's finally on an expiring this year, so he's not like you wouldn't do it on an expiring player. It's like what guy is getting paid? Ben Simmons, I might do it on if I was the Nets. Like Ben Simmons is a great guy to yeah, buy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, Ben. Hey, while you guys have been doing the show, um, first we feast released a video of Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart. I guess you know Q and Aing each other together, together, and um, I just watched this clip. So that Josh Hart breast milk thing, you know, everybody knows about that. The man actually drank breast milk. So yeah, that's yeah, true. We knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very you guys. That's go true. Check it out. There, there's a now. There, check it out after this. But it's there's that. Really there's actually a video supposedly. They said it on the roommates podcast. Like you were jokingly saying with Ben Stiller that they're going to release it or show the Ben Stiller. Obviously, that didn't happen. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, we got another entry. Let's go, Ray Figs, dollar ninety nine, man. Ray, Ray, let's go, Ray, get, Ray, Ray. If you get this Nick set hoodie, man, I want you to change your profile pic to the one with the Nick set. Just hope Boyan isn't another forty eight with Julius. Uh I mean, forty eight Julius offensively actually had a good repertoire. Like forty eight got a Joe, lot of Joe. Stop, off. Joe. Stop. Forty eight. Joe, Julius you wanna? Kick-ass. Yo, Vin. Joe wants to push the Evan Fournier goalpost so far, bro. That's he doesn't want. Yo, Joe, Vin. He doesn't want to take the L. And, and I don't want you to embarrass yourself. You guys aren't. You and Vin aren't using the term goalpost right. We're live with people watching now. When you tell me that as an individual, that's on you. But don't like. That's not how goalposts. Take right. the L, Joe. Like, take what? the L. He set the team record and made threes. I didn't say he was a good player. That is, he still has a record. Maybe DDV passes him this year. I mean, basically, right, 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 right. Got, shooting, no? Ryan, is this a new one from Ryan? Is this a second My, one? Van, Van, Van. This is the Van. first Go back on mute. Go back on mute. Yeah, get out. We got the show. You're kicked out. Go watch. Go watch. You can't mute me. Go, get out of here, breast milk. Uh, Mike Rodriguez, ten dollars. Ooh, we got the first seven. The first seven entry. Mike R is about to steal everything. Shout Mike out to, shout out to y'all. Love the channel. Peace. Pe- Keep pushing that good content, LFG Knicks. Let's go, Mike. Yeah, Joe, um, I want to comment a little further on that. Um, uh, Boyan, yes, or anything? No, no, no. On Mike Rodriguez's comment, uh, there's been a lot of people lately who have like messaged us personally on Twitter and Instagram that have been like showing us like this this love that um, I never thought was ever coming, and just. Um, the content, the energy we give, you know, what we give back. Like there's been so much like love and support as of very recently. And I've just been thinking about that a lot. And I just want to thank everybody. Cause like, we honestly do this for everybody else. Like I enjoy just up here talking, watching you guys comment, going back and forth with Joey. This all is so cool to me. And thank you so much to everybody who's ever like, shared liked commented even once like me personally and us as a group we really appreciate it guys thank you so much 100 percent. i Ange, that was the most beautiful thing i've ever heard thank you, thank you, thank you. outside of so, spelling encyclopedia fellas just so they know what are we we're gonna do the first giveaway at three o'clock so 15 minutes we're gonna spin that wheel we'll do the first giveaway can yes, i get so back I to, to the... mention we're doing the first giveaway at 3 p.m we're doing the second one at 3 30 so we're gonna be on for at least 45 more minutes 17 more minutes. We're going to be spinning that wheel for this giant flag behind me. Not this flag, a new flag. But again, if you're watching on Twitter right now, we currently have a buck 84 on Twitter and 16 on YouTube. If you're on Twitter, you want to enter the super chat giveaway, come on over to our YouTube link. It's on our, it's on our page. We have it uh, pinned to the top right now of our uh, BKE page. Come over to YouTube. You can get some comments in, send in a super chat, get in the entries, try to get this hoodie, try to get this flag. Anyone on Instagram, we can't see your comments. Same thing. Come over to YouTube. The whole shebang. I can say all the words over again. You want a flag? The flag is dope. Joe, let me get back to the hoodie's dope. Can I get back to the Kevin Durant thing? I like. I really want to touch on that. Um, So I I put the comment that was actually up. I think there was a comment about KD that I saw real quick. If you could find it, maybe. No, go. Just go ahead. I'll try to figure it. Go. So I'm just talking about like uh, I asked you what was your initial reactions to Kevin Durant. I I wanted to chime in on it. Um, Yes, Ray. Ray Fix, does the give giveaway go for both giveaways? If you have one entry, it does count for both giveaways. If you enter once for ten dollars and that one entry wins, one of the t- one of the seven names you have up there, we're gonna take your name away one time because that one entry already won. But you'd still have six entries for the second one, if that makes sense. Um. So I, w- my thoughts. Um. We are not doing that. When Kevin Durant <laughs> signed with the Knicks, is um. <laughs> Joe, nowadays, like just people in general are just so like 
uh, like the energy that people give, like how like aware everybody is of everything nowadays. Like to me, like what matters when it comes to being an employee of something is like people just want to be happy doing like what they do every single day. So when it comes to Kevin Durant, I think he's so like ultra focused on the game, loves his craft, loves going to work every day. He wants to be in a situation that he genuinely enjoys going to every day. I'll, I, I'm not a fan of him like, when things go a little sour, just jump ship. I think that's kind of what happened in Golden State. Like there was a bump and road and also the Stephen Curry thing. Like it was kind of always going to be his team. And I think him that and Draymond kinda... definitely wore thin on each other very quickly. Correct. Correct. And you know, Draymond just Draymond, right? I took yes. a piece from Thibodeau there. You know, he says like Jalen's going to be Jalen or whatever he always says. But Joe, way, people like... My bad. I was going to say, whenever you say someone, someone, like if I go Ange is Ange or Joe is Joe, is that ever a good thing? Yeah, I never, like, Tibbs is, yeah, Tibbs is, Tibbs is a madman, but. Tibbs is Tibbs, man. Am I right? Like, yeah, I mean, Tibbs is going to Tibbs. I heard he loves pasta. That's why I love Tibbs. I love pasta. Um, it's Italian. It makes sense. Joe, like, do you agree with me in the, in the aspect of like people just want to go to work every day and just like be happy? Nowadays, Joe, when it comes to like, I have a couple of friends now that are like in like, uh, I want to say the, the, the field of stock marketing and things like that. And Joe, like these people just like jump around, not only because like it's more money, so to speak, but like, what's a less hectic environment than the other? Like, do I, do I know these people? Can I get along with them better? Can I enjoy a few years here? Like that stuff matters nowadays in life. Like it's more than just sports at we that see point. We've seen on this Knicks team, man. Villanova Knicks. I mean, they all get along for a reason. It helps a lot when you have a good uh, good culture at work, a good culture at home, a good culture in life. It makes you do each aspect better. One thing I learned from uh, the sales company Power I used to work at, there was the, it's a four burners theory, which isn't – it's not for sales. It's actually for life. It's you have four burners that work in your life. It's your health, your work, your family, your well-being. Or I, health and well being aren't the same. There's something else. It's health, work, family, and something else. Are you check? It, you, you checked off everything there, Joe? You, you check? I, no. Well, that's the thing. It's like if you're putting if your burner for work is higher, you're putting more effort into your work. You give your family less time inherently. Like it's just the thing is that you can't ever have all four burners high. If you're worrying a lot about your health, but it, your work is making you stressed out or be less healthy, you have your health higher and you call out of more work days. Your work is lower. You can never have all four of them high burning at the same level, same time, or else you're going to be worn out too thin and then you have nothing. Then instead of all of them burning high, they're actually all way lower than you think they are. That's my problem. I just, uh, I mean, I think it's an everlasting problem, like of figuring out the balance of life and how to enjoy it and how to rest and how to uh, love your girlfriend and love watching sports. You know, it's just like some, you know, there's just so much going on that I want to do and enjoy. And it's hard to just find that balance. Yeah, I got it right here. So the the it's family, friends, health, and work. So it's like so I said well being. I meant to say friends. So it's like like that's and that works for me too. Like I have a much better friend, relationship with my friends than my family. So my friends is higher, my family is lower. I I'm pretty healthy overall, so I don't have to even worry about that. Besides your shoulder cracking, I mean, like I was you born can... that way. Oh, it's, okay. Yeah, that's what. That's why I make the joke. Literally, people are like. What's good? Why is Randall not out there? Like I'm like, yeah, my shoulder pops out on its own, man. I would be out there. I would never be out there. I'm five foot eight. Like, what do you want? Hey, um, Mills is coming in here in a couple of minutes. I know that. Joe, I wanted to ask you um, about Julius Randall, actually, now that we're getting closer to the end of the season. Um, the timeline of Randall, I don't know what the original timeline was. I don't know if you know. Dude, but, we thought mid-March, man. We're already past that. Right, right. Supposedly, at one point, Randall was on the same – um, same level of rehab as OG, and then OG just kind of obviously jump started him. Is now he's playing, and now it seems like he's behind Mitch. Correct. Now that we're getting closer to playoffs, the record's okay. Obviously, um, the standings are you know six four to six four to eight is very close, right? In terms of games behind or anything like that. Yeah, you want me to give you the up to the second uh, update real quick since we're talking about it? Yes, Mills. Uh, what's up? Mills is here. Mills, how's it going? We're gonna add you up here. Let's go. Uh, we haven't gotten anyone coming up for the live stream. If anyone wants to join the panel still while Mill is here, we're going to 100% still let you do that. Yeah. Uh, myself or Ange will just take ourselves down at that time. And then if anyone wants to give their take, talk to the other, the other one of us that's available and Mills that's still there. Here we go. Mill, how's it going? Hey guys, what's up? Not too much. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining. 
glad have you got have you guys gotten any donations yet we do we have some entries actually if you look at the spinning wheel of death up top um and what's it called mill you're never on during the day so this is a pleasant surprise for everyone involved yeah definitely i'm glad to be here uh so Ange, from fourth from third to eighth the the Cavs are two games ahead of us uh we're in fourth orlando is a half game behind us one more loss Indy is two and a half behind us. Miami and Philly are both three behind us, and they're tied. So we're two games out of third and three games out of eighth. That's where we're at right now. Um, What was I getting at? I lost you. Once Milk came in, I got all confused. I lost my track of thought. Class, classic Ange, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, show, you show him a squirrel chasing a chasing a spoon, and then the squirrel and the spoon is yeah, gone, and everything's yeah. gone, too. Uh, lost my Milk. track of thought. It's all good. Life happens. Mills Mills wearing pink, so I mean, it's, it is very distracting. We both were wearing black. It's very dull over on that side. There's a spinning co- rainbow color. She has pink, blue, and orange on. Oh, oh, I remember Joe. Oh, there you uh, go. Obviously, you Mills Mills you. Mills is gonna ch- Mills is gonna chime in. Obviously, she needs to chime in. So now we see where we're at. Lagging? Oh, you're good. Oh, you talking again? Hello, lagging. Oh, you're good. Good. No, good, Mills. good. Mills. I tried deleting some tabs up here. That's fine. Hello, um. Good. So we kind of see where this team stands in terms of their production and what you're going to see on the floor every night, obviously with Jalen Brunson and OG. Um, do you want Randall, do you, both of you guys, do you, would you prefer Randall to come back early or wait till as close as we can before we get into the playoffs? No, I'll let you I take would it. prefer he comes back early. The, the sooner the better, I think, so he can start getting into rhythm. I don't want his first few games to be uh, a playoff series because, I mean, he's coming back from injury. We've seen him come back from injury before, specifically the beginning of this season, and it wasn't that great. His shooting percentages were pretty awful. So I think the sooner he can get back and get back into rhythm is the better. The first six games of Julius Randle playing this year, I, I um, remember all the Obi Toppin we saw online. How do the Knicks trade this guy? How do they get rid of this guy? It's all good. Mills Mills having a hurricane over on her side will be okay (laughs) in the meantime. Uh, And then Julius Randle within five games after that reminded everyone they could put up 25, 10, and 4. So that always worked out. Um, Dude, I don't know, honestly, because our starting lineup, the the four-man lineup, and Knicks Film School did a good job pointing this out, uh, Brunson, Hart, OG, and Hardenstein as a four-man unit, it has like a net rating of 30. Like, and if Randall's in there, I mean, yeah, Hart, OG, Randall also makes sense in the 2 3 4. Uh, but I think a lot of their the use in that lineup is that it's always DDV or it's Boyan or it's McBride. It's just a better three point shooter that allows more spacing than having Hart at the two. I would, I think I would wait for as long as pot. I wouldn't want his first game to be in the playoffs. But if he could play like the last two or three games of the year, 15 minutes a game, 10 minutes a game, ideally the Knicks are locked into whatever seed they're in. Or even if they're fighting for positioning, it's not for seventh place. It's like four, five, or six, or even three, ideally. I would want to play a couple games. I don't want to rush them back. We got a panel. Too much. Do we? Oh, look at that. Jay Boogie. Oh, we got someone jumping in. Drop me down. Jay Boogie, what up? And I'm going to slide you away, I think, if I know how to do this. Jay Boogie, we're going to add you to the stage. Let's see if I can make the – oh, there we go. That worked out. Jay Boogie, what up, man? How's it going? Man, salute, salute, salute. Three capital S's, man. Blessed health, happiness to everybody on, on this panel. And shout out to the greatest family belonging to the orange and blue. Anybody that's watching, hope everybody's in the greatest form of health. We pray to anything that you're going through, not only that you go through it, that you also get through it. You know, I told you, man, I, 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 I hit you up and I told you I was having a tough day and I was like, man, I'm, I'm going through it, but I got to get through it. And I turned, I turned on my phone and went to my YouTube. Oh man, here go to, here go to big Nick energy. Okay. And that's where I'm at right here, right now. So then I, I look down. I see, yeah, so I look down a little bit, see you got an open panel. Let me come up here, you know, and rock with y'all guys and let you know. I'm subscribed, so when you go live, you know what I'm saying, I always, you know, try to make sure I'm tuned into your show, whether I hit the like button or I make a comment or whatever, man. 
But I just want to let you know, you all are doing a fabulous job, man. Continue on doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Is you look good, you sound good, everything you got going. I see your energy, I see your work constantly, you know. And that's what we need. Constant, you know, constant creation going on up under this orange and blue. Because this is enough room for everybody. Everybody can get in. The more the more people we got, the bigger we are. You know what I'm saying? And I love being a big franchise, man. Yeah. And y'all just doing your all three of y'all, y'all doing a great, wonderful job. And I just wanted to come in salute y'all you know tell you i appreciate y'all as a because i'm a fan too always first number one i'm a fan i've been a fan since 1978 i'm a fan of anything that's up under this orange and blue and y'all part of the family man so i appreciate me definitely definitely appreciate everything that y'all doing man jay boogie appreciate that man god bless much appreciated Thanks, thank God. Hopefully, hopefully we're helping you have a better work day. Before you go, because Cowboy Bob's up here too. I want I was gonna ask everyone that comes up here. Uh, right. OG is OG is out tonight. So what do you think happens in tonight's game in Golden State? Hey man, it's like like it's been like it's been with all the injury. Next man up, next play up, next hustle up, next effort up, next play on, play on and play on. That's what we got to do. You know, guys is understanding their roles. You know, when they're coming in, that's why I say we so dominant. And everybody get back healthy and full like that. We need to be. We're a dominant team because our bench players been used to playing against starters. So imagine what they would do if everybody's healthy when they come in the game. They playing against everybody bench players when we've been smashing. You know, what I'm saying from time to time starters. So next man up. I hope OG's all right. You know, nothing too harsh or anything like that. Really, just hoping they just taking it easy. We don't want to give them a break. You know, that'll be real helpful for us. But the more most important thing is get back healthy. I like our situation. I win against anybody. I'm always going to pull for us to win. I'd rather pull for us to win and then we lose. You know what I'm saying? That we talk about that for me to pull and say th thinking we're going to lose and then we win. Then I felt like I wasn't with the team, but I'm with the team. So OG, rest up that elbow a little bit. You know, and and we got people that can do what they do. Let's go brush and continue on doing what you're doing. Come on, effort amongst the whole team. Solid defense is what we went in and we, we playing with, you know. Put that anaconda around these bodies and squeeze them up, man, real tight, man. And Tom, keep doing what you're doing. Shout out to Leon Rose. He should be executive of the year, all the moves and everything that he's made, you know. And everybody's stepping up, man. God, man, God knows I appreciate this season really to the fullest. I really do. It's dude, it's been an absolute blessing, Mill. I know you started being yeah. a fan at a much at a, uh, more recently, obviously, based on age. But like to compare, like growing up with Carmelo Anthony 2013, 2014, 2012, 2013 versus now, like how much more does this team feel like a New York State personality, a New York City defense first? Like for Mike D'Antoni versus Tom Thibodeau, Tom Thibodeau is a New York, a New York guy, New York personality, defensive minded coach, way more so than Mike D'Antoni. So, mm -hmm. what. What do you guys both think of the fact that this team seems like it's more of the New York mindset than even the last time we had a great team and a great player? Oh, man, right now it's really a New York mindset. It's much more that hard, you know, nose defense that we – Grew up watching, you know, um, that bully ball, you know, playing in the parks. You know, I, I came up playing Utah, you know, that's like one against like 15 to 20 guy or playing 21, one against whoever else is on the court or playing King of the Mountain one on one against whoever else is on the court, man. But that bully ball, that hard nosed defense, man, like the Charles Oakley, the Xavier McDaniels, the May he rest in heaven, Anthony Mason, the John Starks, the Gerald Wilkinsons, you know, man, so many guys that we have, Marvin Webster. We so many people, the, that, the captain, so many people that was on um, solid defensive players, you know, um, all the way to Michael Ray Richardson, one of the lockdown defensive guards, you know. And before that, man, the great one, man, the legendary who should have a statue outside of MSG, Mr. Walt Clyde Frazier himself, Willis Reed, that hard-nosed defense. That hard nose defense and that hard nose go hard, never give up type basketball. This is what the Knicks is doing right here, right now. What's that? 21, 22 games up under um um holding people up under um a hundred points, man. That's solid, number man. one in the league. Number one in the league. Nick, that's solid hard work, man. You know that, that that just just we believe in our defense. If you're gonna beat us, when you're gonna have a tough night beating us. But Lord knows if we're clicking and our shots is on, you're gonna have an even tougher time, man. But man, right now, man, we looking so beautiful, man. The fan base, you know, we we appreciate. And for a few years until you know, right right before like the um that playoff um year, the Julius first playoff year. 
Be right before that, man, it was us, the fans, that was really making it hard to play in Madison Square Garden. Now it's so beautiful to see it's a team inside Madison Square Garden that you got to deal with it. The fans, we ain't never going nowhere, never been nowhere. We've been in there solidly, you know, from all, all the sold-out games and everything. But to see a team actually in there, locked in with the fan base, and, you know, when you get the rocking in it, the, the building get the swerving, if you know what I'm saying, feeling like you're in that ocean ride, man, it's just a beautiful sight, man. And, and I'm I'm real happy for I'm real happy for the organization. And thank you, Leon, for doing what you're doing, man. Thank you, Coach Tibbs, man. Them Coach, Coach Tibbs deserves to have his full roster. You know, he's been asking for his tight team, his tight players, and I could get it somewhere. Now we got him. Now we've been held up. We only held up, y'all, held up with some slight injuries. But them guys is gonna be back, man. And I know Julius wants to get back 100 percent Um if he didn't want to, if he didn't want to come back one hundred percent, he would have came back before the twelfth, just so he could play and be have a vote to be amongst um um the All NBA team. He like stood Howard, out basically. that, right? So he missed that. So that lets me know Julius don't want to come back until he's fully healthy. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate that, man. We deserve the best, man. Eastern Conference Finals, we coming, man. We coming, man. For real, we coming, man. One hundred percent, absolutely. Jay Boogie, we got Cowboy Bob waiting in the background. Man. Uh, we got to do the super. We got to do the super chat spinning wheel. It's already after three o'clock, so we got to do the giveaway. Uh, man, got to do, man. Much appreciated, man. Let people know where to find you. We'll give you the sign out. Oh man, you can find me anywhere on Twitter, man. Anywhere on YouTube, man. J Boogie the Nick, man. Um, somehow, somewhere, you got to DM me. Let me get y'all some music. I just dropped the Frasier. The Frasier song is, you know, airing out right now. Yeah, I heard that. That shit is fire. That is amazing. The Frasier, yeah, that's for um his birthday coming up on the 29th. I just dropped the Mike Breen song too. You know what I'm saying? Got to pay homage. He's the first one to 100 finals. You know, um, games that he called. And I just dropped another song called Weather the Storm. That's you know talking about what we've been through, but. I'm I'm gonna get out of cowboy way because you know what I'm saying. I gotta respect him because I've been trying to get him to give me one of them cowboy hats. I ain't talking about Dallas, but a cowboy hat. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna respect him, get out of the way. But y'all stay blessed, man. Salute, salute, salute. Three capital S's. Appreciate salute you, man. To you, Jay. Thank you for yes, coming yes. on. Always. We got cowboy uh, Bob coming up there. through the roofs. Yeah, let's salute to Jay Bug. Salute to everybody on the panel. Good afternoon. How y'all guys doing? Hey, Good, Rick. Cowboy. How you doing, man? Thank you for leaving the very first comment before the thing even opened up yesterday. I really appreciate it. Where Real did quick, you guys, before we up? get into Cowboy, uh, you'll be back on screen in a second. Now is your – if you guys want to get the flag, the flag's the first giveaway, right, Joe? Yes. So right now is your last chance uh, to give Super Chats to be in the running for the flag. So we'll give them a few minutes. If We're going to let Cowboy make... talk. By 310, we'll do the spinning wheel. Yeah, so now is your last chance to get into the giveaway for the flag. Subscribe and like the video, here. guys. Subscribe and like. 100%. All right, Ben, since you're – oh, there we go. Cowboy, go ahead, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, but I always do that with you because I know in the chat, me and you've been going back, like, with the Zach Collins thing, and I've always been shooting shade at you. But it's just – I like doing that to people. We have different opinions, man. That's how. That's why we're such great fans. We're passionate. Yeah, I like to, I like to just drop Nick notes about everything, like, on uh, my uncle's show. Like, I know Jay Buck from Uncle show, Uncle Freezy. Yep. So – me and him, we always go back and forth, but like I always talk rebounds. But on this show, I don't think we really have that much of an issue. Most people don't even see how our offense is transitioning. I've been saying it that it's transitioning from the old school down low post game to the three pointer. Everyone's saying that we don't have offense. Remember, I even told you about before the Philly game. If you look, he Josh Hart did shoot 40 percent from three after the all star game. If you did look before the Philly game, and then he went one for six. The last two, three games, he's not playing well. But if you look at his overall average from last year, it's 47. This year, I think it's like right now it's at 38. But yep. what the point is, is what I'm saying is, is our players are stepping up into positions we didn't even know they had. Josh Hart with his three ball pressures, being able to play four and five. The way that Dante still giving us defense, even though his offense is stepping off, he still contributed. McBride kind of seems to be the firecracker. So when you really look at this team, we have offense. It's just we're not laying the shots down. One game, I, to the last two games, we've tied as far as 40, uh, 40 field goals and 43 pointers. And in the game before that, we went like 53 pointers and like 40 mid range. So if we're hitting our shots, that's our offense. So everyone's saying, you're saying we don't have offense, we do. But our key thing that kept us in the game is rebounding and also keeping us in defense. Because when we're on the court, 
if you if a team is hitting sixty percent of their shots, they're gonna beat us. That's what it looks like. Look at the Bucks. The Bucks every time they beat us, they shot their best against us as far the as Bucks the and Celtics court. have both killed us from the three point line. Exactly, this year, we have no we have no three and D guy. And at the time we played the Celtics, we didn't have OG. That's yeah, that's another reason why I keep saying we need to play either one OG. of them on our team. Exactly, and if we just had a guy to maintain for what OG's coming in. I know there's some like Smith Jr. from Dallas. Like there's some guys out there we can get for two, three million and keep it under wraps and sign OG. But if we keep what we have now, we're good. And this team, for me, like I said, 50 wins early in the season. I still see with the trades and the advantage, we still have that because of the formula of Tids and the front office. I may not agree with everything Tids is, but before it was never like this as a Knicks fan for me. It was like, oh, the coach is doing his best, but the office ain't giving him the players. Then when they gave him the players and the superstars, we had bad coaching. And then when we did have the balance of both, it was, hey, let's clean this up and start fresh. Like Phil Jackson or Isaiah Thomas. Like, I remember all the bad years. So right now with what's going on, seeing Tibbs getting what he needs, showing his coaching, we're good. I really think that we can win against Golden State tonight, but... I wish OG was there to slow down Kaminga, but what we really need to do is get iHeart I Heart and Precious down low early. Get them involved as early as possible. If iHeart's playing um 20 minutes, first five minutes, get him involved to where like he was doing with Sabonis. We need that type of iHeart. We get him, we get Precious down low. Brunson, when they get uh, iHeart off the court, Brunson, no more looking for players. Do what you did against the Kings. Look downhill, get your shots, let everyone grab the rebounds and create after that. <laughs> We're good. It's just the consistency. That's what I'm scared of. When Randall and OG actually comes back, Randall can play at 50% and we're still good because we're losing by 12, 13 points. Right. Here, actually, that's a perfect uh, perfect segue. Uh, just Knicks, 499. How far can this team go without Randall? Again, anyone that wants to enter for the flag, you have four more minutes. We're doing it at 310. Uh, Mill, here, you want to go first, and then, Bob, you can go afterwards. How far do you think this team could go if Randall didn't come back healthy this year? Yeah, so and you want to talk about how far we can go in the playoffs? Yeah, like the regular season, the rest of the playoffs. Like how far do you think this team could actually get without Julius Randle? Say Mitch comes back and Randle does not. Uh, I think we can still win one round, the first round. Um, the second one, it's questionable because we don't even know who we'd, who we'd be going against yet. So, you know, it all depends on the matchups, but... Julius Randle hasn't always been that present during playoffs. So last year is a scenario where we've seen that, where he wasn't that available and that productive. And we still made it to the second round, nearly beat Miami Heat. I know it only went to game six, but still, you know, it was close. And Jalen Brunson was pretty much doing it all on his own. So um, I have even more confidence in him this season to take us even further because, you know, he's playing on, on a MVP level this season. Um, averaging 27 a game and just we saw it the other day back to back 40 point games he's putting this team on his back when he needs to with Julius Randle being out and I expect him to do the same in the playoffs so I believe we could get to the second round possibly further if Randle doesn't come back but I, I'm, I'm sure he is coming back John Candy with a dollar ninety nine super sticker to enter, enter the giveaway way to go man appreciate it uh Bob, uh, uh, back to you before we do the spinning wheel. Uh, how far do you think the Knicks will be able to go this year without Randall, assuming Mitch comes back, Randall doesn't for the rest of the regular season? What do you think I, the uh, ceiling would be? I don't think that's a fair question because if you're just saying just Randall, but we're getting back OG and Mitchell, I see second round because of the fact is, is we get that extra body to rest up for heart. We get guys that maintain the bench, and we can solidify the first round. And then I think like what we did last year, second round, you know, game six without Randall. But Randall's that guy that's going to give us that, like I said, 15 extra 20 points because defenses, they have to prepare for him. Plus, he's a facilitator. So him being there, I see he's the conference finals. Without only Randall, but we still got OG and we got everybody else on our horses. Second round, game six, game seven at best. Because at some point, the way that they're setting up for Brunson with the double teams and the traps early, Dante has to step up and be an all-ball off on ball, off ball type of player. When they're trapping Brunson, he needs to be controlling the ball, not Hart. Fast. But, I think Hart's better on the like if he if he gets the rebound and pushes, yeah. But for, to bring the ball up the court normally, I definitely think it should be Dante more often. And um, why is Brunson? One more quick question: Just why is Brunson inbounding the ball like majority of the time? 
And I don't like that because I can understand the give and go to give them the screen and create spacing. But there's so many other plays you can do to where you can have Hart inbounding the ball to Dante over here on the wing. But then you can have a cutting man of Brunson coming in to cut back to the basket. to three. 100%. Points. Dude, what blows my mind about that is that, like, there was literally – you say that and there was literally a play in the last game they played – uh, against the Kings, and Brunson's inbounding the ball with 3.4 left in the shot clock. Like, dude, you're the one that we want the ball in the hands. And then it was like a Precious Achua, like, jacked up mid-range shot that didn't go in. It's like, if there's like 10, if there's like 8 plus seconds, you could do the give and go. You can change the hard sign, Precious, Sims, whatever, get the ball right back. Uh, less than 4, man, you and Dante got to be the two that are out there running around screens. I need you guys to get open. Like, I don't know. <laughs> And I'm saying screens to where I'm in the back part of the court. Like, if this is like the half court, I'm on yeah. the back corner of here, and I'm setting the screen and wing you out to where you come here. And if they try to stop you there, I can still pass it over. Yeah, okay, right you can rub the, the wing elbow through. and then be able to dish back to the center. Yeah, Exactly. You can use them as a diversion. There's so many things you can do with, with Jalen Brunson. That's why I think we're good. But Randall, man, if Randall's there, that just that boo. That My biggest thing with Randall – if Randall is back, hopefully to get let it ready for the postseason and get lined up, I don't even think this team, with its current iteration and like having if OG's elbow gets better and he goes back to shooting forty percent from three, obviously. Uh, but with OG, with Dante, with Hart, he, he's shooting thirty two percent of the year right now. He sometimes shoots forty five. He sometimes shoots twenty. You catch him on a forty five percent week. You have those guys mm-hmm. running around. Boyan figures it out, like which we still expect him to at some point or another. Alec Burks, bless his soul, man. If you could just do what you just did last game a couple more times. God bless. But you know what just, I mean? Real quick, though, because I know you guys got to go, but if you look at how when Brunson goes off, when Randall goes off, and when Josh Hart goes off, if you look, there's a three- to four-month consistency to where we can really just control it next year. I hope that it comes to fruition, but we need Dante to be that guy. That I think Dante that needs a fucking week off, man. Yeah. I swear to God. This dude looks like he is tired out there because Dante playing 36 running around those screens is different than Hart playing 43 playing hard on defense being able to take offense off sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I agree. He needs a week. Dante, tell me, dude, he's been shooting below 35% for a while from three. He needs some days off. I think it's, I think it's what it is is he's trying to do too much as far as getting back on defense. That's the thing that's scaring me. Like, he has the – the way he was in approaching – first of all, you got Steph Curry. Lord Wardell, Steph Curry. I know I called him Lord, but that's because <laughs> I lost the bet. I lost the bet. But he has his that's book, rough. and that's not easy to get. Like, if you got that guy's book, you should be seeing screens and calling it out. But I just think that he's trying to do too much because, remember, when he was with the Bucks, he was starting to do well but then got injured. Now with us, he's getting a second opportunity. He did beat out Grimes, and I think that in that, he's trying to figure out, hey, I got to make this. I got to force that. You see him coming off the screens. He's not even squaring up as more. He's just kicking out his feet. You don't see him looking and bringing his shoulder into the actual rotation. Like, he's looking more like, I got to get the shot off to get back on defense. Once he figures that out, Dante will be good. That's why I told everybody, all-star next year and Dante, because he can give you 20 points with the defense. That's it's making up for what we thought we lost in RJ Barrett. That's for sure. Cowboy, yeah. thank you so much, man. Much Go appreciate. Next time we do this, definitely come up and subscribe and like the video, y'all. Y'all have a good day. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah. it. Hear the story behind this man's hats. Those are iconic, dude. One Ange, day. Well, Ange, welcome back, man. I was, enjo- I, w- I was enjoying. Let's spin, this, let's spin this damn wheel. Yeah, Eugenio literally goes before you spin the wheel. He goes to spin the wheel. I need to sweat in that hoodie and wipe down with that towel. Let's go. It's a flag, not a towel. If you use this as a towel, it's not going to work. I've tried on my dogs. No, I haven't. I would never use that like this. It's not a towel, though. It's a hoodie. Or it's not a towel. It's a flag. Vin, make that make that be the full screen and spin this wheel. Uh, I'm just going to spin the wheel, Joe. All right. Forget the full screen. Forget my idea. Let's go. Wheel of Morality. Turn, turn, turn. Tell us if you guys watched Animaniacs as a kid. What are we looking at? Let us know. Who is Mike it? Mike R. Looks like Mike Rodriguez just won a flag. Let's go. BKE flag going to Mike Rodriguez. Mikey, message us on Twitter or Instagram and we'll... Uh... Send us your address. We'll send you a nice little flag, buddy. And guys, Mike Mike put a ten dollars super chat in before, so he's still gonna have six entries in for the hoodie. But oh, he's wow. t- so he's losing one of the seven. He's still gonna have six more. So everyone that's in, make sure you keep adding in. Make sure you keep trying to get in the. Su- if you want, like personally, not gonna lie, I like the flag. 
I want the hoodie more. I'm not doing this, obviously. I'm not the one donating or anything, but I, this second one's what I was be looking for personally. So if you guys want to get in, try to get this hoodie. This Nick set hoodie is probably one of the most fire things that we've seen been making in a little while outside of his daughter. Parker's number one. This hoodie's number two. Like, let's go, guys. Let's let's see what we can do. Let's win some money. Let's win some hoodies. Nick said all day. Daughter fire? What? You just call my daughter fire? Would you rather it be terrible? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're right. Vin's daughter's number two. This hoodie is the most fire thing he's made. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, yeah, my car, uh, I'm on the I'm on the horn over here. So hit us up, and we'll get this sent out to you. Word up, word up. Mill, uh, you actually were saying before we had Cowboy come back on, I, what the hell? Oh, about uh, about Randall and the injury and stuff. You said you actually said the opposite of what uh, the other me and I think Jay Boogie said at the time. Um, you want him back ASAP. Like, how, how soon is soon enough that you would be like, okay, this is good? And then what would sound like it'd be too soon where you'd be like concerned that he might get hurt based on where he's at? Um, maybe too soon would probably, probably be in like the next week. And I think that would be forcing it. Um, we haven't really gotten many updates recently. Uh, have you seen anything news wise about how he's doing? No, not in the past, uh, 24 hours. Ange, have you seen anything? Eugenio with a dollar 49 super sticker chat. Uh, I think we can give you three quarters of an entry at that point. Uh, just Nick's give going that man an entry. Give that man an entry. Well, give him, Eugenio, you got an entry, man. I'll know you saved 50 yeah. cents, but Angel's <laughs> feeling nice today. Uh, just Nick's, I'll just buy one. Jalen will make all NBA. Jalen is 100% making all NBA. And John Candy, $5. Uh, I want to win this Nick set hoodie so bad. Are you worried about OG's elbow? So we'll actually do. Oh, crap. He bumped it up. He got another dollar. Let's give him another three quarters entry. This man has one. Get him in there. Entry. Get him in there. He's got 1.5 entries now. Uh, Mill, we'll go back to John Candy's uh, OG's elbow after this, but when would you want Randall to come back and what would be too soon? I think I'd want him to come back either like the last week of, I mean, we're approaching the end of March. I would say it the very beginning March of 18. April. So here, I'm not going to go through the whole schedule. There is still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more games in March, including tonight. And then there's one, two. Eight in April. So seven in March, eight in April. The season ends uh, the 14th and starts for the playoffs 420. So 420 is 33 days away, 34 days away from now. I think that the beginning of April would be pretty good. I mean, that's eight games to condition himself back and get into rhythm. Hopefully that's enough. And to also play with the new acquisitions we've had because he hasn't had a chance to play with um, Bogdanovich or Alec Burks, not that he really will be, but still just having them on the team, getting to know their playing style and everything. I do really think that Boyan and Randall can have some 48 Randall. Like I'm, I don't want to say the word magic because Randall or Ange will bite my head off. If I said 48, any magic as a Nick, <laughs> apparently sets a record gets no credit. I get it. Fellow bald man, whatever. Uh, His record this- is going to be broken soon. Okay. Soon enough. Probably next year, honestly. I, I thought it was going to be this year. DDV really is uh, starting to shoot too much, and I think he's actually taking a hit for it, but what are you going to do? Uh, the first game in April, I'm assuming you, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm assuming you're going to be like, never mind, don't play that game. But the first game is against the Heat in April. Oh, man. I don't want to play that game. He's going to get really injured. I don't want it. Joe, I was waiting. I was, I was hoping you would tell me to talk first because I want nothing to do with the Miami Heat, Julius Randle. God, no. Joe, I'm going to be honest. I don't think oh, he's shot. That real quick. Stephanie Rodriguez, $10 super chat. Seven entries for Stephanie Rodriguez. Thank Let's you, go. Stephanie. Someone's winning this hoodie today. We're doing the entry. We're going to do it at 335. So 17 more minutes. We're going to enter for this hoodie. Uh, Ange, I, don't, I hate the heat too. So keep going. I just still think he's not shying away from nothing. Like he's, we're thinking, hey, you don't want to play against the heat because this is the team that constantly injures him. He's like probably eyeing that date. Correct me if I'm wrong, Joe. Dude, Randall's he's a, a lunatic. He's eyeing that date, and tell me you're not staring at Jaime Hasquez, Ben Bam Adebayo, and you're like, don't go within a hundred feet of those two a holes. Joe, stay far, re- away. dude. Go, go home. Go to another arena. Play Joe, somewhere else. Get away. Joe. Shortly after he got hurt, I remember Tom Thibodeau's press conference. I don't know if it was before a game, if it was that shoot around, whatever. He was talking on camera. Obviously, they were recording him. 
they took the he said he felt bad for the physical therapist. And I feel bad for the physical therapist as well because Randall is probably harassing these humans trying man to get back on the court. In the man wakes up at 4.30 in the morning calling PT and goes to bed at 9.30 at night on the Joe, PT. I think, I think there's a lot of Nick fans that have either disliked Julius Randle in the past or currently it's dislike you know, him. Mike got his wife donating smart move, calling my cousins now LMFAO. This I is- didn't even realize <laughs> that. Damn, Eugenio just put you on blast, Mike. It Fire. is Stephanie Rodriguez. Look at that. They have the same last name. That's super incriminating. Ah. <laughs> yo, yo, guys, I want to bring some up because I just read Mark Berman just posted some, which is actually interesting about the OG and Anobi injury. It's, a, it it's his theory. Or? It's his theory, but I think that he's onto something here. So OG and Anobi was on a minutes restriction coming back in. OG and Anobi played 33 minutes the other game. Shot one for eight. They, he thinks that it's the Knicks brass protecting OG Ananobi from getting overplayed by Tom Thibodeau, so it's a higher up call. That's what I, I mean. Me and Andy have talked about this I, before. I, I don't we, believe yeah, that. Me and you have talked about this before. We do know that uh, what's it called? That like I mean, one of Tibbs' main detriment throughout his whole career as a coach is that he overplays players, and if they're available, he's playing them thirty-eight plus minutes. Like I always thought, the best version of a front office that could use Tibbs would be like, hey, if a guy's available for you, you can play him thirty-five plus. But if you don't, if he's not available to play for thirty five plus, he's sitting out that game because uh, we don't want him to be in your hands. Me personally, Mills, you could just um, chime in. Obviously, right after I, bro, the guy had surgery. I think that there is obviously a correlation of communication between the front office, the coaching staff. I think, bro, maybe he had a thirty five minute re- minutes restriction. Like he hit thirty three. Like I don't think OG's like forcing himself to play, bro. OG's never played a full season. Like, I think he's playing whatever amount of minutes he is because that's the amount of minutes that he's capable of playing. I don't think anybody's protecting him. I think there's a plan in place. Mark Berman, you're in Florida. I don't need your sideline comments from the bench. You know what I'm trying to say? This OG's covers be high right. school tennis and then also comments on the Knicks. What a weird... What a Mills, crazy, what do you think? I mean, you think, like, life. there's some disruption between coaching staff and front office on this, you know... Injury, so to say? Uh, I'm not going to dig too deep and say that I think there is some type of disruption between those two. Um, Similar to what you said, I think he just played the amount of minutes he was supposed to play and could play. Uh, I do think he was on a minutes restriction the first few games, but, um, you know, that's going to ease up. And if he's feeling good, I think he's going to continue playing in a game. But, you know, Berman's a goalpost pusher, Joe. Oh God, Bill, keep going. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was pretty much done. I, I, yeah. Oh, here's another theory. Another theory is that they're saving OG for the actual matchup. They want to have him ready for Denver. Yeah, I heard that too. It's a regular season game, though. Yeah, I think they should. Just, I think if OG needs to, he could play every other game until they get to the playoffs. So, like, I, I, I have faith in them at this point. I know I was trying to like hot take anti homer nick fan be like we're gonna follow the seven seed that's actually better like i think they're saying four or five or six one way or another you know like og can play every other game they can go like eight and seven nine and six or whatever the last 15 16 games of the year and they're not falling out of the they're not falling to the play in with where they're at currently like if the mills are we play every other day we're good mills are we gonna hit 50 wins how many games we got left and how many wins we have Bob goes, uh, there's 15 games left, and I think there's 40, hold on a second. Uh, you want to read Bob's comment? We have 40 wins, there's 15 games left. I heart's on a minutes restriction last night. If that is that, we can use them for the playoffs better now rather than not make 50 wins in Eastern Conference Finals than 50 wins uh, first or second round exit. Yeah, I, he's saying he'd rather the team get fully healthy, and then if we win 48 instead of 50, like so be it. I agree. I don't, 50 wins doesn't matter. If you won 49 and you won the title, or you won 51 and lost in the second round, what would you rather be? I'd rather be the team that won the title, personally. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, 50 wins doesn't really matter. I mean, you'd like to hit that milestone, that that mark right there, but um, you would rather get further into the playoffs than yeah. say you got 50 yeah. wins. I still think 50 wins is just like an organization thing, Joe, to just say, like, this is the first time we had 50 wins in t- over 10 years. You know what I'm trying to say? Like from a media perspective to show that we won 50 games for that amount of time. Just think about all the graphics we're going to see if the Knicks win 50 games. Like that matters in the world of the internet, so to say. doesn't yeah. matter to you. All you care about is championships. That's why we can't get along. 
Rings, baby. All you need is rings. Does Mills, does Mills know, like, my theory upon championships and not winning championships? Joe, you explain. Know, you explain. God, Ange, this is your thing. There's 255 people watching right now, by the way. We have 240 on uh, Twitter, 15 on Instagram, or 15 on YouTube, countless more on Instagram. Uh, we're doing this entry in the next five, uh, in 15 minutes at 340. Did I say 340 the last time? Yeah, 340. Uh, make sure you answer for this hoodie. We already gave away the flag. Mike Rodriguez won the BK flag. We have a bunch of entries for the hoodie. Get your name in the hoodie. Uh, $2 for one entry, $5 for three entries, $10 for seven entries. If you're on Twitter, come over to, to come over to YouTube, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, get some entries in, win a fire Nick set hoodie. We might even let you pick whether it's blue or black. That's up to Ange, not me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They can choose whatever they want. You can pick whichever color you want. Get in for this hoodie. It is fire. Ange, what'd you ask? Oh, oh, Ange, uh, for Mill, explain uh, I'm I'm rings or bust, and I always want to build my way to a title. I have different viewpoints on how each team should or could build their way for a title. But if a team, I don't ever care about a 50 win threshold. I don't care about an MVP on my team. I don't care about all stars. I mean, if you win a title, you have all stars in your team. That kind of goes without saying. But it's rings or bust for me, more or less. So Ange feels differently. Ange, go ahead. Okay, so I think of it from uh, from the long term perspective and how much bad basketball I watch and how much of a shitty organization that the Knicks were for all these years. And I followed them the same exact way. I just wasn't making content on the internet like we are all now. So I just think of it from the perspective of I've seen such such a bad franchise and such a bad product on the floor that I could really appreciate and enjoy good basketball, winning a playoff series, winning a second round series. Hope hope to see that very soon, possibly this year. I like the building. I'm enjoying the process of becoming a good team because of where we came from. I could say, I could say right now that if the Knicks don't win a championship, I still think it's a successful season. What do you think about that, Mills? Are you championship or bust, or are you enjoying the process? Because I know, I know you watch games with your dad. You watch every game with your pops, Mills. Yeah, that I is so that is so fucking awesome. I don't live with my dad, but I wish I could just um, think about going to watch a game with him at his house. It just never winds up happening because Vinny's got me working like a dog for Big Nick Energy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like. Your dad has a unique perspective because he's an older gentleman. So I'm sure you're hearing from his side of things, and I'm sure your dad's enjoying this team. What, no, what are type you... of fan are you? Hmm? What type of fan are you? Yeah. Where do you fall on this, yeah, where uh, do you stand? Scale. Oh, that's tough because Come on, I Mills. think, honestly, I, I reside more with Angie's. Yeah! Mindset that we've seen a lot of bad basketball and ever since I started watching the Knicks like what I watched like two or three playoff appearances they weren't that great but and then it was downhill from there so it's like I'll pretty much take a good season if I can get it um do I expect the Knicks to win a championship I didn't expect them to win a championship last year definitely I just didn't think we would get that far um this year I have a lot more confidence in us to get at least to the Eastern Conference finals I mean I'll take a good season and I'll take what we're getting the 40 point games from Brunson him being an all-star Randall being an all-star like I'll take all of that in and that's probably what I'll remember the most about these good seasons what is the outcome that would make this a successful season Mills to you getting to the Eastern Conference Finals and having it be a competitive series talk spicy talk spicy Mills ECF (laughs) I I think it could be competitive I I don't think it's, we're going to get swept at all. Um, you know, I literally made a video about it last night that I do think we have a chance to actually compete against the Celtics, seeing that they have not faced a healthy Knicks team yet. And OG Ananobi brings a whole different meaning to that yeah. matchup. So Mil- Mills homerism in that video is amazing because she's like, I think Jayla Brunson could be the best player on this court. And I'm sure Celtics fans were going crazy. I don't think it reached that many Celtics fans, but if it, if it did, they would definitely go down on that. Joe, successful season is this year. You've watched a lot of games, every game, I'm sure. They get You're however, telling me if the get. Knicks don't win a championship that it's not successful season? I think when I say championship or bust, you view it as a, every year I feel that way. Yes. No, that's not what I mean. So is this championship or bust season? 
No, they have to, I think they're going to I think what success to me would be they only lose to the Celtics in the playoffs. Whether that's in the second round 4 or 5 matchup or they make the 3-6 and they lose in the conference finals. Everybody in this to, chat. If they lose to any other team, I think they failed based on what they were capable of. I, I want to see in this yeah. chat if who agrees with Joey, who agrees with Mill. Where is everybody at in this chat in terms can, of what's a successful season? Can I give you a better uh a better definition Viewpoint? of yeah, what, sure. what I mean by like championship or bust. So like sure. I criticize the mellow trade, right? And it's because it's not because of Carmelo Anthony, the player. It's not because of like necessarily the players we gave out. It's the players we gave out plus draft picks knowing in, I mean, hindsight is obviously 2020, but I even felt this way at the time being a 20 year old fan. Like there is no path to this team winning the NBA finals. So for us to give away blank amount of assets and players to get a player that I would rather have draft picks and assets and save them up for a champion, save them up for a later date during a super team. I would never make that trade because the heat existed at that time. I think that's a bad move. So at, and those years, I didn't think it was championship. I think it was championship or bust because we dealt everything. So therefore we have no assets. So either you have to win now or you're a failure. You failed. Then the Knicks in essence failed the mellow saga, Phil Jackson, the whole existence, KP, that whole shebang. What they're doing now, these this slower, more incremental build, they trade a draft pick for a future draft pick. They trade a draft pick for a player they still have on the team. But they're not trading four players, three draft picks, a partridge and a pear tree, and two golden rings. You know, they're not trading their whole life away for the chance the feign interest or chance of a championship. I appreciate the slow build. I appreciate that they made the playoffs three years ago. I I mean, even the step back to step forward thing, that they didn't make the playoffs two years ago. The Fournier setting the record year. Uh, they made the playoffs again in last year. They got Jalen Brunson. They made the playoffs last year. Actually won a round. This year, if they win a second round, or like like I said, whenever they lose to the Celtics, I think would be a successful season. If they end up not having to play the Celtics, then I want them to make the finals. Straight up. If they lost, they, I only am only cool with them losing to the Celtics or losing to the losing to the Nuggets. That's the Bucks, what about the, the Bucks? I think we're better than the Bucks. They lose to the Bucks. I consider that a disappointment. If they lost it to the Bucks in the second round in game seven in Milwaukee and a really competitive game, I wouldn't I would be upset. I wouldn't be disappointed in the way the franchise is moving. But I don't go in every year championship or bust. It's that I want to see what I can I perceive as moves towards building a title team. Joe, that's th- this was this what you just told me was like two years in the making. I wish I you wish you would have told me this two years ago. Now I just it's over. You, you feel how you feel. Championship or bust, you're not changing my mentality. But yes, yeah, very nice to hear, Joe. And you and I, I tell I tell you words or phrases, and then the way you grasp them or think of them is just very different than how I grasp them <laughs> or think of them. And then I think that's where a lot of our arguments in the past lie. It's like I'll tell you something and you're like what that means today now you never talk about the future you're a stupid idiot moron i'm a fan you're fake you like the nets are you a secret celtics fan how dare you not think jalen brunson's my hero he's god like, do i talk in oh that my tone god, of voice Julius randall is the best thing of all time like i he's better than sliced bread he's better than brothers and sister ravioli put together he's like if howard beach had a real beach that's how beautiful julius randall is like i i tell you championship or bust it's like there's so much paragraphs. I could write a book about what that means nuance wise. And you're just like, they didn't win a title this year. You're disappointed. You're a stupid fan. Stupid yeah. loser fan. Ugh. Yeah. Hey, Larry Johnson L for you. Larry Johnson L for you. Ugh. Yeah. Do the Fortnite <laughs> dance, Joe. Show the fans. I don't even know. I don't play Fortnite. I don't know the dance. All right. Let's read some of these comments, by the way, because this, uh, this went off the, off the wire. And they were uh, AP and Bob and I think Eugene were all responding. Uh, to this, uh, car life. We're gonna read this down. Uh, take each, take each game at a time. Whatever you need that basis, eyes on the playoff prize. I'll rest whoever you need on that basis, eyes on the playoff prize. Back to the OG, not playing tonight. Thing. It's a slow build. I don't think the Knicks. Correct me if I'm wrong. I said if they went two and two during this road trip, I would be satisfied. And they already won two games. Uh, what did you guys want them to do going in? And are you cool with whatever happens now? Against the Warriors and Nuggets, I mean. Go ahead, Mills. Yeah, when we were on the post game show the other day, I, you said two and two. I think you said three and one. I was feeling optimistic then. What I say, they would only lose to the Nuggets. 
Um, I was I feeling remember. spicy. It was something like that. I think so. But I said two and two, and I thought the wins would be um, against the Warriors. And then uh, who, who was the first team we played? The Blazers. The Trailblazers. Yeah, Trailblazers. Um, surprised. Not really surprised, but just happy we won against the, the Sacramento Kings. So I, I do expect another win tonight, even though with we we might not have OG. It'll be tough, but I, I think we have a good chance to win. So if we do lose and we lose against the Nuggets, I think I'll be happy with two and two. Uh, I wish I read this comment when we were actually in the middle of it because this was from 323. Bob goes, that's a failure giving all the work they moved, made moving young talent. They need three players and we're a championship. The three players are named Randall, OG, and Mitchell, as in Mitchell Robinson. Uh, I think, so, oh, so this might be to me saying that it's a success whenever we lose to Boston. I don't, so Bob, this is, I know this is actually, so I wish we both were talking about or thinking of this when you were up here still. Um, or you can come back up after we do the spin, one or the other. Uh, just because you deal young players doesn't mean you have to win that year. You know what I mean? Like, we're still building the slow incremental build. Uh, there was a comment before talking, AP posted it about uh, the Suns probably blowing up. What's How long is KD going to stay there? They're relying on Bradley Beal, who can't play more than 10 games in a row. Um, and Devin Booker might want to leave. And I think, and me and Angel both talked about this, I think there's a strong possibility Devin Booker is a Nick by the year 2026 and like do I think this team currently is built to win an NBA championship they're close I just don't think even with the trades they made they're there yet but they still have nine tradable first round picks and pick swaps and like they wouldn't trade OG and an OB this upcoming year or Jalen Brunson but Julius Randle, Josh Hart, Mitchell Robinson, Dante DiVincenzo, Miles McBride, Jericho Sims, all these players plus all their draft picks are all tradable assets. Like, as long as they have o- Jalen Brunson, and I'm sure for at least one year, as long as they have OG and Anobi, the guy's agent, Sam Rose, for God's sakes, I don't think he's going to be traded to the Knicks, not signed a contract that upcoming year without them already knowing. Um, like, if they didn't make the finals this year, or they won, but they won two years from now, and next year they actually ended up trading some of the guys that we love in New York, but they, like, Hart plus Steven Chenzo plus four first round picks becomes Devin Booker. And then that's the championship window right there. Devin Booker, Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson. You know what I mean? Like they're still building forward. The reason why this is different than when the Knicks made the mellow trade is that that was all of their assets, their upcoming assets. They had no other move to make. The front office has done such a great job of getting these players. Yeah. IQ quickly. Obi and Grimes are all gone. They still have Sims and McBride. I don't know how much that's worth to a lot of people. I know RJ and IQ are both major sticking points for a lot of people. But they still have all these draft picks, including two this year. So it's not like the kids are ever gone. And it's not like this team doesn't have anything. Um, here, I'll let you guys start commenting. I'm sorry. Uh, that's all right. Everyone in the playoffs is 0-0. Zero and zero. As Jeff and Gunny used to say, now is the real season begins. And AP also goes, remember, we also got two draft picks in the summer that's going to be used for something. What happened to Rokas Yokobitis? You guys want to speculate where Rokas is right now? No, I want to just say that there's three minutes left um, to enter this giveaway. So if anybody, you got $2, you got one entry. $5, you get three entries. $10, you get seven entries. There's three minutes left. If you want a chance to rock that beautiful Nick set hoodie, we got black, we got gray, we got blue, all the Knicks colors. Um, right now, Mike and Stephanie Rodriguez are trying to steal this from everybody, and he already won the flag. So someone get some money in, make sure that family doesn't take everything home, and tell <laughs> Vin that his daughter is the second most fire thing he's made in his life behind this Nick said hoodie. Cowboy Bob, we see you're in here. We're going to give you a chance to come up right after this I'll giveaway. Back. We'll give you a chance to come up right before this giveaway. Uh, right after this giveaway. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, we're about to do it. Let's keep... Uh... AP goes, he thinks it's a successful student because they're ahead of schedule. Uh, Bob, since you're up here, we're going to read your comment. Uh, Eastern Conference Finals versus Boston Game 6 in New York is what I want to see best oh, year since this is that, Bob? Played. Yeah, yeah, same dude. Oh, yeah. Bob, he's the man. He has a cowboy hat. I didn't. How did you not already figure that out? He also just, does other Knicks content. He's awesome. on Dope Soul, Knicks Freeze and stuff. Awesome. Uh, Eugenio goes, uh, if we get go a smidgen farther than last year, because, I mean, we lose in Game 7 to Game 6 or game, Round 2, I guess. Like, anyway, it's already a successful season according to our rank and record. It was chip or bust, none of us. If it was chip or bust, none of us would have ever been Knicks fans. Yeah, I chose a very tortured life. There's, first, there's two minutes left here. Guys, I'll give you a two-minute special. If you put even a dollar, we'll add you in. A dollar for an entry, baby. 
Who's putting in a dollar for the last 90 seconds? And that's sales right there. I mean, is, you know, it's a ta- business genius. Yeah, no, listen, everybody's got four quarters. Just throw them in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, here, read this last one, comment on it, and then we'll do the spin. Brooklyn's own said, teams are struggling against our bench. LOL, that speaks volume. Uh, Mitt recently commented that he is willing to co- Oh, Mitch recently commented that he is willing to come off the bench with Hardenstein balling. That's the team culture Tibbs brings. And I think that's funny that he took not funny, but interesting that he took that as a positive comment because if you guys are like on if you see Nick's Twitter today, they're all going down on Mitch for the comment he made and they didn't take it as positive. They took it as um him showing attitude and just Of course. Negativity well, always sells. He said the most team player possible thing. I, I I'm willing like, to come off the bench. Of, How is that a negative? Yeah, a lot of people said that they want him to come off the bench, and he said it himself. And then it's a problem. I don't get you, it. Eugenio taking taking notice of the promotion, the the, the promotion <laughs> that we just have. Add an extra dollar in there. If there they you throw go, Eugenio in again. There we go. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds beautiful. Yep. He says he got dollars like strippers. And on that note, we're going to spin this wheel, Vin. So Strip clubs wheel, suck. Wheel of morality, turn, turn, turn. Is Vin even at his computer? We don't really know. He's there. He's there. He's there. Oh, I'm he's here. There. Oh, okay. There. Yeah, All right, Virginia. everybody. Drum roll. Everyone, oh. everyone make their thing. You know what a drum roll is, Ange? I know. I, I got <laughs> caught because I didn't know what to I didn't. I didn't know what to hit. So I, I, I just clapped. <laughs> All right, I got dogs barking now. Shuffle, I'm drumming so shuffle, much. Here we go. Shuffle, we got some dog barks. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Here we go. Will it be the Rodriguez or will it be the field? This is like the Boston versus the Eastern Conference field odds on fan on FanDuel. No, who is it? Ah, of course. He didn't even need his wife. What a cheating a hole. No way. Look oh at this guy. God. Mikey hacked the system. I'm telling he you, this guy it. hacked the system. Who the hell did this? Oh, man. Mikey, for Eugenio, man. Mike, congrats! Everyone's gonna be uh, very mad. Mikey, congrats! <laughs> you deserve you deserve both. You this won. Man just got fucking eighty five dollars of merch for twenty bucks. Mike, wow. hey, Mike, what would make it even better if we have you up after Bob on the panel? That'd be really cool to talk to this you. This dude's one hundred percent at work right now, and he's like, "These dudes are idiots." Ah, I got them. I got some free stuff, mother effer. Mike, right, I think you should wheel. buy the lotto. I'm actually taking the wheel down, Ned and Cowboy fellas. And yep. All right, take me down. Take me down. No, no, no. Hey, stay up. What are you doing? There's four of us. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Eugenio, we're just going to leave your dollar up here as the comment, you know? <laughs> just, just in memoriam. Thank you, Eugenio. Sorry you didn't win. <laughs> and are you adding him or what are you doing? Let's drag. Can I, can I drag Bob up here? Let's, uh, let's all know how to use technology sometimes. What's happening? Oh, there we go. Bob, welcome back. Good to be back. Thank you. All right, so yeah, let's clarify on uh, why you... So you think that because the Knicks traded away RJ, IQ, Gr- Grimes, and... Uh, yeah, that's it. Obi was last year. They traded those three guys away that this, this team doesn't end in the finals. It's a failure? Yes, because um, if you look at the development of everyone that has been here, if you haven't been doing well, you basically got traded. Let's look at this year. You could even look at last year before we got Hart. Everyone was like, yeah, what are we doing getting a guy like Josh Hart? I'm not going to lie, I was the only one in my family everywhere I was running around telling everybody we got to get a in the heart because I knew he could rebound and his energy would give us what we needed. Since then, if you look at the addition of Dante, if you look at how they cut the fat with RJ and they got rid of everybody else except for McBride, they extended McBride because I think that they like his offense more than what they did with Quickly because they could control him I think also because it costs them money. They're going to have to give IQ 25 plus. They got McBride for four mil a year now. Exactly. So they signed him on a cheaper deal. And I think that they see something in him. That's why we saw minutes and spurts after they signed him of him getting more minutes. So he's in a development stage with the addition of OG. OG was supposed to be basically the impact that OG has for us defensively. RJ was supposed to have it offensively. He was supposed to be our third option guy that was supposed to, they were supposed to basically prepare for it or where he can hit the open three and go downhill as well to where um, our guy Randall was supposed to be the down low threat and Brunson being the out low, uh, the outside threat. But with the changes and everything, they got veteran players to basically support the bench and actually rotation players in OG and in Precious. Then if you even look at what happened with Flynn and also what they did with Grimes, 
Grimes got beat out by Dante DiVincenzo midseason. And then from there, we haven't seen anything from Grimes. So them moving all these younger players right before they lost their actual value, because I think at the end of this season, RJ didn't have any value. That's why I say I think they tripped all the fat. They got a bunch of young enough veterans that are hungry to where we don't need to go out and get a Dante, uh, uh, what's his name, Murray from Atlanta. Because what I'm seeing is, is, like I've been telling everybody, Josh Hart has stepped up and actually added a three ball to his game. What is wrong with him being a backup to Dante? <laughs> Let's look at let's look at next year because we could save a lot more money. Let's be real. You have Brunson, Dante, you have uh, OG, Randall, and then Mitchell. Or you could put iHeart. I don't care because to me, we're I, think gonna I, gonna be, I think iHeart's going to be. I think iHeart's going to get a bag next year and probably be gone personally exactly. because of the early rights I, thing. Because yeah. of the money, I yeah, agree. Yeah. So if we stick with Mitchell, cool. We could stick with Mitchell. Now, if you look at the bench, you have McBride, who already knows the system and can create. Downhill and actually gotten better with the three ball. You look at how Josh Hart still can rebound, which is a rarity for the two guard position. You put him there. You find a guy, like I said, Jones Jr. from Dallas or back up to OG for small forward. Then you have Precious at the four. Now, remember I told you, Zach Collins, everyone's like, oh, he's injury prone. You're only using him for 15 to 20 minutes. He's a double double guy. Even Nick Claxton is available. The floor, he can shoot the three, too. Exactly. You even got Nick Claxton who's available who can help you out on the first team as far as defense and offense and rotating the way OG and him, come on. Then it'll just be even bigger a problem because the way Precious and OG matches up now, you can actually see that with Claxton and OG. And then you have Claxton, OG, and Precious, come on. So the variations for me is to focus on a backup small forward and a center, and we're good. Because you have two extra spots that'll be for specialists or young guys. You can use the draft to get the young guys you need. But – with all the moves that they've been making, it's looking like the next three to four years, starting this year, they want Eastern Conference Finals and Finals only. Because Boston's been at it for six years, no success. It only took us three years to get where we're at. They're going to make a, a big-time stand. Part of that, part of the Boston thing, though, is that like their, the age of their players, like Tatum's only 26, uh, Brown's 27, they have KP now who's 27, obviously Holiday's in his 30s, but uh, Derek White's 28 years old. And that's their core five. Like their five, their five man starting lineups. One of the best, one of the best of the last thirty years according to net rating. That's why, like I agree, I agree with everything you just said. I just think like this year, like I said, I think they're going to end up losing to Boston no matter what. Especially like without a one hundred percent healthy Randall, without like the, the injuries, everything. And I just think like the Knicks are still the one smallest bit away from actually being where Boston's starting five is. Now, if you tell me Randall's healthy and KP ends up getting hurt, like Nick fans have been trying to speculate slash kind of cross their fingers for over and over again every year, then yeah, I'd be like, dude, I can totally see the Knicks beating the Celtics. I would still have them losing to the Nuggets, but like they would get to the finals. You know what I mean? But like, I truly think next year is like the finals are bust for me personally. I just don't think, I think this year we're still behind Boston. They put together a great team. KP has managed to stay healthy. Their starting five has been there the whole time. Sam Hauser is a great three point shooter off the bench. Horford's great leadership. I just think their team is put together. Well, Tillman adding Tillman as an inside guy to kind of battle. I heart off the bench or Mitch great battle right there. That's actually really worthwhile. <laughs> also, anyone that goes by the name senior, huge fan of repping your children like that. I appreciate it. But like I'm with you up until this year being finals or bust, I think it starts next year. If they I lose the Bulls in the second round, it is what it is. But if you notice though, like I said before, when we played Boston, we didn't have OG, we didn't have this team that we have now. So even if we were to play them in the finals, I think that we have a better chance of actually beating them because think about it: you have a guy in OG who can either stop Brown or Tatum. Yeah. KP has to worry about Hartenstein on the defensive end because if he stays aggressive, Hartenstein can get him into foul trouble. Yeah, KP can pull him out, but then KP gets into foul trouble. Two, three quick fouls, he's out. Now we got the upper hand. So there's strategies and ways we can beat Boston. I just want to see us at that finals because for me, me standing here saying, oh, we're Eastern Conference final team. If it doesn't happen, everything I said and all my points are invalid because that's nobody cares. So for me, it's Eastern Conference Final or bust this year because, like you said, everyone thinks Boston is the team. They're not. They're built around a guy like Tatum, and Tatum is a rarity type of player. And they're successful because of Tatum. And every now and then, everyone else, because of Tatum's work, they have been able to thrive. Look at Brown. Brown's defense has been lacking, but Tatum's playing D on Brunson. He was playing D on um, Giannis. 
I yeah. hate teams trying to play defense on Jokic the other night. Like, well, the way, use, I was gonna say, use, the way they use Holiday and uh, Ho- yeah. Ho- and White, they actually both get to cover bigs. Their defensive uh, starting lineup, because but, of the two of them at the point of the attack, is amazing, and they can switch five out because those guys are small. They have Holiday cover Jokic half the time. It's absolutely but, unbelievable. But that's because of Tatum, because Tatum's ability to switch on and off. Yeah. Yeah. Shooting guard, and in the way he's able to create on offense and defense, because you think about it, when they use a help out defender, they are not going to use Holiday and all those guys until they're actually down at the basket. They'll try to use for the mid range. They'll use a rotator in um, Tatum, and they'll try to come over and hit you before you get to the paint. So for me, the fact that he's able to cover that, go back on offense, create, and be consistent with his free throws, it's Tatum. So for me, we can beat them because every team is built off of one superstar: Bucks with Giannis. Everyone's built off of that. We yeah. can beat them because, to me, Tatum is that dude. But when it comes to their support in the third quarter or the fourth quarter, because of this team, this season has proven it with all the injuries, we're already solidified. It's like a George Popovich when he used to rest Tim Duncan. In the I want to ask Oh, Angela, I want to ask, ask you both a question real quick. Oh, Angela, there we go. Uh, and Bob is gone. What are you doing, Angela? No, You're moving I'm everything in. around. I didn't touch. I didn't touch. Uh, I who's touch. doing it? Where's Vin at? We got to make it three person because Mills is gone. Oh, uh, word. Okay. Oh, uh, coming just up. Said bye. Uh, I sorry, I didn't mean to take okay. over Mills. No, it's okay. Uh, Bob and then Ange also answer the same question. I'm going to ask. Assuming, assuming full health, like assuming Randall and Mitch is back. Uh, obviously, Game Seven's in Boston. What do you like if they got that far, uh, and if the Knicks actually get lucky enough to move on to play Boston because they obviously aren't playing in the first round. Uh, what do you what do you think is the end result of that series? Knicks in seven, Boston in six. Like where where would you be, and what would you be happy with, even if they lost or disappointed in? Knicks in seven. I think hey, what would you think? I think that's exactly what the NBA wants. That's for sure, right? They probably wrote the <laughs> that's the script, Joe. Knicks versus Celtics, Eastern Conference Finals, Game Seven. I think at that point. That's where experience comes into play, and Tom Thibodeau better outcoach the shit out of Joe Mazzulli in that point. Even though Joe Mazzulli is a hell of a coach, yeah, and he's willing I mean, he's to pro- try. He's, he's a hell of a coach he, within a short time. For sure. Listen, it's easier when you when you go into something that has the crop that they have, but to try the things that he has tried, like the variability, like you guys were talking about, that just shows his willingness to expand on his own coaching. So. Yes, Joe Mazzullo is a good coach, but Thibodeau has been in the game a long time, and I think if it gets to Game 7 at Boston, man, that will be the most electric game that I've ever seen. Bob, maybe not you, um, but man, I hope that's the script. So, Bob, I, I didn't mean to cut you off to, uh, to have Ange also give his take. Go ahead, so you said Nixon 7. How do we get there? How does that happen? I can break it down move for move, game for game. Ooh. I'm one of those players that I don't talk numbers and stats until after the game. I can talk about movement and how we play. So, for us to beat Boston in game 7, Brunson has to come out first off and start feeding his guys down low. If we have Randall and if we have OG, he needs to get them to involve immediately. And if iHeart's there, same thing. If no iHeart, Mitchell, use Mitchell. If Mitchell starts, I would use Brunson more. Brunson and Dante, I'd have them set up on the outside perimeter with three early if we have Mitchell. If there's no Mitchell and we have iHeart, down low presence first with Brunson. Get them involved. Once we take the five or seven minutes out and we start our rotations, I want Dante to be more of an on-ball controller with Josh Hart. Josh Hart comes on, we go back and forth with that type of mix-up. Plus, with McBride coming in, we can do matchup for matchup. But the thing is, is when you look at OG, I need OG to be locked on Brown. I need um, Mitchell or iHeart to be locked in on KP. Just cover him. You don't have to close out because that's another thing. KP will get his head fake and he can close out and he'll get that foul. All you have to do is just stand your ground. Once he puts his back into his chest, keep your hands up. Once he turns... Hands stay up. Don't jump into the play. Keep your hands there. Because you love that he loves that for turnarounds. Exactly. It still takes a lot because even if he turns around and kicks out and his feet hit you, they're going to start drawing the fouls on you. And now KP's out because of offensive fouls. That's the type of strategy I want from iHeart. Uh, Precious Ochoa, I mean, not Precious, um, Randall, just do your game, man. You create, facilitate, be the third, be the guy that's just third with the ball downhill, doing what you're doing. You're mixing your three ball, whatever. But if Brunson and Randall get into their own early and everyone understands that down low president, we're good. Later on in the game, start incorporating more threes. Boston can't stop that because when it comes to rebounding, we're going to be better because of the long ball, three ball. 
We have Josh Hart, who's going to be in playing mostly third quarter type. And then you're going to have Precious playing with him along with OG. So for me, those rotations that we're getting, those key rebounds, is going to make us keep the, keep the tempo. Only thing is, is we got to hit our shots early. So I tell you this. Do that, downhill. What I got out of that is Bob definitely wrote the script. <laughs> 100%. Bob's got it. Yay, man, you got that on the money, boy. I tell you but that for the sure. Only thing, though, I'm worried about, like so. I said, Dante, win, bro. The only thing I'm worried about with Dante is the fact of, to me, what I see is his mindset is he has to play both sides. And if you look at Ant-Man, is a prime example. You're going to lose something on one side of that ball, no matter yeah. how talented they are. It's not yeah. like Jordan days to where Jordan can lose a little bit on defense, but then he has Pippen and he still looks the same because of the way the league rotates and plays defense. All we really need to do for me is I want to see Dante just be like Alex Caruso, man-to-man, on-ball defender, and pick at the picking lanes. That's all you got to focus on and control your shot. That's it. And then Dante will blow up. Bob, I'll tell you this. Um, thank you for coming up, dude. You're fucking awesome. I love, um, no I love how you talk about the game, bro. Um, also, just freaking tell me about your hat game. What's it about? Bro? I, I got to know. I like fashion. Talk to me about it quickly. Actually, I'm out here in Columbia. Um, I'm out here studying um, some history, personal history. And uh, I actually met up with a friend of mine, and he was saying, yo, you want to travel South America? Come down to Columbia. So I came down here. That's awesome. I bought this hat. This is uh, one of the hats, the traditional hats in Finlandia, Columbia. So it basically blocks the sun. And I wore it on one of my shows, and my friend gave me my name. He's like, hey, Cowboy Bobby, hey. calm down. And then hey. me, I was like, He's like, you got to wear the hat. And I'm like, but I don't want to wear just this hat. He's like, but everybody knows you with the hat. So it's stuck Yo, with you. Yo, you got it, bro. It works, man. You're like I, the new age, like Cam Newton. Like you leveled up his hat game, my boy. You look good with I it, really, for real. I, I really do this for Frazier, though, mostly, because I don't want anybody to get it twisted. Frazier is the greatest niche. And Brunson is Ooh. not better than Melo. Let's not start that yet. That's that's the thing that I'm hearing already. Brunson's better than Melo. Frazier is the best guard. We Trust me. Frazier's the best Nick than Ewing to me. Wow. Frazier's better than Willis Reed, even for you. If you look, if you look at how if you look at how Frazier played, and like my dad used to talk his my ear off about him, like, oh mm. nobody playing like Wolf. I'm like, Dad, stop. I know. Well, Frazier, he's the guy that did like the whole motion. So yeah. for me, what he contributed, if you look at it, it's look at Josh Hart now that has the 20 point game consistently. That's based at any moment. That's who he was. If you look at it, he can rebound, pass, assist, control the ball, and he's just out there having fun talking. Hey, guys, we got this. Hey, That's Cowboy, exactly I got to I gotta ask you a question. What, in 10 years from now, we're going to fast forward, what do you think of Jalen? Like, what's going to be Jalen Brunson's resume, and how do you see him being viewed from Nick fans like us? I see him and Randall winning one ring. And wow. Wow. Something happening to where Joey's eyebrows get. raise tremendously. I'm, no, I'm, because if you look at the potential this year and next year, we have a better chance this year because everybody's basically it's all for the championship, and Boston's the only real threat, according to everyone. So with that being said, we could even move up into the second position now. So we have our favorites right in front of us. Our best chance is this year. We can go all in next year, but we don't know what next year gets. So this year and next year, if we both make finals. We have an opportunity of winning a championship out of the next two years. So I see us winning one, not making it, and then Randall leaving, but we keeping the same system in play, and then Brunson winning one again on his own. I see two wings in the next, like, 10 years. I wish they were back-to-back, -back, and then it's like the next eight years we don't have to win. Because then I can be like, I don't care what anyone says, but yeah. in the next two, 10 years but I see three finals appearance and two championships, one with Randall and Brunson, one with Brunson and a new team. Cowboy, um, two more, two more questions or kind of dale, one question. Dale, dale, amigo. They're oh, kind of, hey, they're kind of the same thing. Um, does Me does Melo's does Melo's jersey get retired, and does Brunson jerseys get retired in the rafters before? As much as I hated Melo because I thought we could have made so much more, but it was just him. Like, no matter how good we built around him, it wasn't going to be successful because there was too many outside influences. But for me, Melo should be retired because if we can honor and respect people like Lynn Sanity, give them a month, give certain people, you know, if we could give guys that, like Charles Oakley, we need to give these guys respect who were here when we were having bad times. Like, let's be real. 
Melo, I was watching the game just because of Melo a lot of those times. And when Amari Sotomayor went down, I was like, that's it. My season's over. But because we had Melo, we still were watching. We still had some hope, and we still saw some good basketball. So for me, both of them should be retired because Melo reminded us of what a good Nick player was as far as being a superstar on a bad team. Brunson, his ability to do this in two years is impressive. So for me, he has to get retired because – who would have thought after him leaving Dallas being this good? Everybody knew his footwork and stuff was like this, but we got him on the cheap, man. I mean, we talk about Jalen Brunson and and and, and uh, Carmelo Anthony. Like, I'm sorry. I'm going to bring up Julius Randle being just as important. I don't think – I don't know I about agree. his jersey getting retired, but he doesn't get the same sort of love because he's done some silly things like thumbs down and, you know, he's done a couple of things. But Randle's just as important to this team he, he, and this franchise Rand- as anybody. Randall to me is like Latrell Speedwell. Like, oh, no I love Latrell, is, boy. No matter how good he is, like you know, no, because I'm saying like I love Latrell too. But no matter how good he was, you know, you have those Knicks fans that like, oh, Latrell was a bum, even though he played for our team, we liked him, but they really don't like him because he's my of favorite how he team, is. favorite players a kid growing up. Why do you think they yeah. attract that energy though, like Randall and Speedwell? Like, what's it about them that just attracts that sort of energy towards them? It's because when people expect them to be great, they're so trapped in the moment that they can't succeed. Like, look at last year. Last year, we missed Randall in the playoffs for a game and a half due to injury, and it's because of Miami. But everyone's right. saying, oh, Randall doesn't show up in the playoffs. Right, okay, right. let's look at the last three times we've had it, the last three years he's been here. He's gotten hurt in two of the series. He's hurt now. Every time we play Miami, it's always some BS. Or Listen every up, time, Joe. Even the Cleveland games. The Cleveland game, we missed him for a game and a half against Cleveland. So, it's not that he can't perform. Is they do so well in the regular season and put so much into it that when playoff time comes, they're burnt out. And then when everybody else is expected to step up, they're like, oh, we know these guys can't do it, so we're going to give it to you. Like when Randall, when we lost to um, Atlanta, everybody killed Randall. But how do you expect him to be playing with what he had? Like, I mean, with uh, Joe, one, what Joe you don't want to tell Joe that because Joe's Joe's belief say, is watch. Joe's belief is if you could if you could get on the court, you better damn sure produce. You, you better shoot thirty five percent. I agree with that, but the fact is is that it was only Randall. No matter what you looked at it, us winning one game and that team went to the Eastern Conference Final that year, like for us to be winning one game with just Randall, that shows me like I agree with you. Randall, oh damn, the Godfather. This is a take, boy. Now I'm a big Julius fan. It all started with him because think about it, Atlanta, all the rotations. Tibbs never had his guy. Who was the guy that he was looking to? Randall, I need you to step up. Got you, coach. Got you, coach. Got Whatever. You what it's, it, it seems well, like. What uh, mixed the most against the Hawks was that Mitchell Robinson wasn't there and Clint Capella just got to eat inside because Nerlens exactly. was not. But you know, if Real Mitchell Pels was not there, the guys. Todd, but if yes. Mitchell was there and Randall got to actually play the right game that he is known for, we probably would have had a different take. Joe, I think um, that Randall's play style, and I think Cat kind of falls in the same tree. There's just some guys that like. You don't get double teamed as often in the regular season. It's not as aggressive. You don't get collapsed on as hard or as much or by yeah, as yeah, many yeah. teams. I think in the playoffs that t- when teams game plan for you both four or five, six, seven times in the series, and they know you like hanging on the ball a little too long, and they know you like kind of doing one dribble too many, you get swiped at a lot. You get double yeah. teamed a lot. Yeah. You get your shots are way more contested. And the thing about being able to make an 18 foot running shot along the baseline and ended up being out of bounds, that looks great in the regular season. That is a game killer in the postseason. Joe, the Joe, there's, there's something to say, uh, uh, how Rob just brought this along. That's really resonated with me. There's something to say about just the growth and whatever this team has needed from Julius Randle, he has given it right in that first year. I'm sorry, not that first year, but that year, COVID year, leading yeah. scorer, um, all star, first time all star. I mean, first time all NBA, yeah, bucket getter, whatever we needed, right? Um, anything that we needed, right? Now he's kind of playing second fiddle. Going to need to play third fiddle. It almost seems like if the Knicks win a championship, maybe who knows? Next couple of years. So it just seems like there is something to say from the the progression of from when Randall got here to right now and it's and it's something to see it's something telling you know last four years you got a two time All NBA three time All Star like and, and you're and, playing and, a guy like Brunson over him I I think that's disrespectful don't get me wrong Brunson is holding it down because Randall's out but let's be real you when was the last time we had an All NBA twice 
When was the last time we had an all star twice? Yeah, and he up. wants to be here. Like he's not even asking for more money. He's hey, like, hey, I'm hey. saying he's about to ask for more money, man. He changed his agency for a reason. He's trying to get that bag. Hey, the Knicks fans easily could have threw him out of town. They kind of were. Tr- they were trying to. I'm trying to, dude. And if I, even just last year, he li- like him and RJ both were equally as terrible in that game six. What did they do? They all ripped down the Randall poster. No one touched RJ anything. That's the problem with like, but that's the problem with New York fans. It's not what they did. It's what they're doing right now. And, mm-hmm. you know, people just in general need to just, I don't want to say lower their expectations, but just don't just live in the moment. Look at it from a little bit of a further perspective and you can get to really enjoy the process. Oh, like, that was even, nice. Like, look at Amari's oh, hey. No one remembers that year and a half we had Amari's Oh, time. boy, I do. I, I wrote a, it. hey, 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 Bob. I, I love it him. up until he punched the fire extinguisher. Me yeah, and exactly. Vic. I, and then I was like, we getting mellow and yeah. him. And then I saw the accident. I was like, oh, Bob, uh, me and Vinny, um, I don't know. Are you familiar with Vinny, my partner? I don't I don't know. I have to see his face. I'm more of a people person. He's the one that's off the screen right now. He's the one that uh, might. Oh, the gentleman that idea. keeps interrupting. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he spins the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me and him started this company. Uh, we were branded other bring it to NY uh, for many, many years. And in 2013, we kind of just were just a merch shop on Instagram. And we were mm-hmm. able to get in touch with Amari Stadamar and his family. And I kid you not, my favorite play. Uh, I don't want to uh, whatever. He was, he was a favorite player at the time. He was, he was a fair player at the time. I wrote him a love letter that I've never <laughs> wrote a woman in my life, brother. It's okay. uh, and oh my God, I, I got nothing in return, but I needed to let off the love that I felt for that man. And I did. I'll tell you this. If I ever get my dream to come true, which is to wear a snake suit and a gray and like a brown hat. There we go. Madison Square Garden and shake Fraser's hand. That's all I want because wow. I want my dad to see it. Because my dad is like, that's my son. And I'm like, yeah, you told me 25 years of nothing but Mr. Frazier this, Mr. Frazier that. So you got your wish. I, that that would that would be my fave, but That is awesome, bro. That is really I, cool. I, I want to ask all these new guys, remember, Randall started it all. He's the godfather. Pay respect to those that Yeah, Joe. Before. Yeah, remember Joe. That. Remember hey, that, Joe. DeMar DeRozan was great for the Toronto uh, Raptors, and he got Delphic Y. Leonard, and they won a title. Goal post you can't mover. Be you can't be goal the post mover. It ain't just that. They were doing well before <laughs> they got Kawhi, too. Everyone forgets that. And then even besides Kawhi. They made the playoffs six years in a row. They never passed LeBron. The, but Kawhi missed, like, I think 10 games that season. And even in the playoffs, he barely played one of those games. He came in only the fourth. So he for played, me, it he played 60 games, man. It's my argument about why I like OG more than R.J. Barrett. It's that, yeah, R.J. Barrett's more available more often and he's a better scorer, but OG and Anobi's impact matters more. And Free, Big Freeze actually made a great, like, he couldn't have ordered it any better than I ever tried to mm-hmm. in my life. If you have OG and Anobi and he plays only 60 out of 82, but and you go 40 and 20 in those 60 games and he's available in the playoffs, whatever you do in the 22 games, he's not there. He helped you get 40 wins. It's not his fault if you only ended up 8 and 16 otherwise. You should be saying the same thing about Randall. That's all I'm trying to say. The same I thing just think Julius Randall's play him. style, he's going to be replaced when the Knicks win a title. I just don't think no, he'll be on the team. It, I, I think he's going to be replaced after we win a title too, but he's going to be like replaced in a negative way. Like, oh, we finally got rid of him as opposed to people actually paying homage. But the same way you just described about Randall's impact, that's why I say you guys need to respect Randall. I do respect him. I like I like watching him play more often than not. I mean, sometimes he's infuriating. I just think he's easy to he's easier to game plan in the playoffs. That's it, or, um, especially against like an Eric Spolster type. For everybody that's in here, we got three hundred people in here. It seems like a lot, Joe. I don't know. You've been you've been on stream a little more than me as of recently. But we got two eighty five in Twitter, fifteen yeah. on YouTube. Anyone wants to come so, over? We're actually about to end this. Uh, mm. We've been on for two hours and seven minutes. I do want to ask both Bob and Ange one more question uh, to answer uh, this emoji person's question do we know the latest on randall we know as much as you do ian begley gave the report two nights ago mitch was actually closer to coming like closer doing encore activities than randall is he's still doing light pad work shooting around stuff like that we haven't heard anything else unless it's happened in the last two hours while we've been on uh i do want to ask you both a question it actually relates to clyde frazier and bob you wanting to wear a snakeskin shoe uh dress shoes a cowboy hat and meet him made me figure out exactly how I wanted to phrase this. Cause I think we would all appreciate fans of Nick's past, present and future would love for Clyde Frazier to have a, a statue outside or inside of the somewhere. Right? I want to ask you though, say this statue got made. I'm going to propose to you an idea. 
Should it be Clyde Frazier in a player jersey, the statue? <laughs> Clyde Frazier in a broadcaster suit, the statue? Or Clyde Frazier... Half player, half suit, all one statue. Damn, damn. We got to make a graphic. Vinny's got to make that. I actually want him to have his uh, announcer uniform, but in his right hand, have the mic as like a, basically like a, I forgot what it's called. Like his, uh, the cord? Like his staff. Like his staff. Like the oh, mic yeah. Staff, and then a basketball in his other hand, and he's palming it like this. And he has a mic in his hand, but he's wearing a suit with the hat. Because I'm not going to lie to you. Not that many fans actually know Clyde outside of the booth. And it's very rare to actually see him play because when you see him play, you're like, that's Clyde? Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. for me, he used to have the mic in the one hand, palming the ball in the other, but with his announcing uniform. And in it, should have it like up here in the top, his number. And it just says, New York Knicks, go New York, go New York, go. And at the bottom, it should be, I'm hitting them with swag. <laughs> like one of his craziest phrases. I think one it has to be wheeling and dealing, man. I think wheeling yeah, and dealing. Like, for I'm always people. wheeling and dealing. Like yeah, that would yeah. be perfect. And then that's it. Because that's what we all know him for. I know him for years and listening to him. Him going, I, honestly, I've been blessed for over 40 years of hearing him. So for me, it's like God bless him man. going. I don't think I'm going to be the same Nick fan. I respect that. Uh, Parrish goes this year's Randall as a winning ball player. That wasn't always the case. I do think Brunson's leadership and the way that Dante and o, like they all get to move around him now helps out Randall more than no offense to RJ Barrett. I just think RJ Tibbs Randall was just never going to be a three headed monster that worked out. I think it was always two of the three at the most. That's this is the decision that they made. Uh, so I think the spacing and Brunson playing with him again a year has helped out with him becoming a winning ball player instead of having to be the number one. Uh, Ange, if you want to comment on this, and then give me your Clyde Frazier statue uh, theory. Uh, I'm gonna go right to the. I'm gonna go right to the Clyde Frazier. I, I talk enough about Randall every day of my life, so I'm gonna <laughs> go to Clyde Frazier. You know what? How about this? <laughs> Put fucking two statues up. One of him in a suit with quotes on it, and one of him as a ball player. I don't know who's more iconic. I didn't get to see Will Clyde Frazier, so I'm listening from your perspective, Bob. Oh, no, um, I'm listening for my dad, too. I, I, hey. I think it's the broadcaster, man. I mean, he's been doing it since, what, it's over 25 years yeah. now. His playing career was only 12 or 13. Yeah. I, I mean, he won a championship, though. Two, neither. One, two, he, started, yeah. he started with the Knicks, and then he had to sign over to MSG, so there was a break to where he was only allowed to do certain games. Like, he couldn't even perform in MSG. Wow. They, yeah. They figured it out. Wow. Yeah. Like, there's a, there's a lot of things that he had because he wanted to just stay local. He started off because a local network liked him. And he's like, I want to stay with the – this is before MSG blew up to what it was because yeah. it was competing with Sports Center, It was competing with everybody. So what he was doing was I want to boost the ratings with the local. So then when he had to do the big ESPN games, he wasn't doing those games. They were giving it to Marv Albert and everybody wow. else. Wow. And everybody, Knicks fans, started saying, yo, give him a contract. It was like two years of it. And then he fought for his contract, got it. And ever since then, it's just like – even when we're not even in the playoffs, him just announcing the games, it's like, yeah, I'm telling you, we're gonna miss, we're gonna miss a very good. Uh, before I listen to him, hit to him and Breen talk about grass grow, man. I swear to God, I would watch that. <laughs> I would watch that. Broadcast. You know before, what I'm saying? I would, I would be there with a ruler like he. This is what he means by one eighth of an inch. Okay, yeah. I'm telling you, it'll be awesome, dude. Yeah, it'll be, the be it'll be like tool time with Tim and stuff like we're that. We're mowing and growing out here. Look at this grass. Yep. <laughs> Like, before like, um, <laughs> before Joey wraps this colors. up um, for yeah, the start. 306 people that are in here, subscribe um, and like, shit, guys. subscribe and like and share. And also, damn, we're in a good move. Knicks are playing basketball tonight. Knicks have been winning. OG's been back. Whoever he's um, out tonight, but he'll be back next time. Correct. Uh, if anybody uh, wants a 25 percent off code right now, message me on X. For the first five people that message me, it doesn't get nothing specific. Obviously, I will give you a twenty five percent off code to use on our merch. Just write, um, give me that code or something. I'm sorry. Just write, yeah, give me yeah, that code or something. Like that. Whatever, I'll, I'll get the point. But yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's what I want to end off with. Joey, finish up here. Bob, thank you so much, man, for joining. Always appreciated. Go, that was awesome. Awesome. I've always liked listening go, go. and commenting. Subscribe and, and like, guys. Have a good one. Thanks. Always subscribe and like. Absolutely. Make sure you hit that like button, share, subscribe, comment. All that good stuff. Turn on your notifications. Anyone that's tuned in on Instagram or Twitter, we greatly appreciate it. Come over to come over to YouTube. Our, your comments get here faster. You, next time we do a giveaway, you can do the super chat giveaway. All that good stuff. Uh, and the Knicks play the Warriors tonight. There's no OG six point underdogs. 
I don't know. Jalen Brunson's on a heater, though, man. I think I think we can go three and zero so far on this road trip. Let's go Knicks. Knicks win by right? eight. Knicks win by eight. That's probably plus fifteen hundred on Fanduel. And Dante that. scores twenty four points. Ooh. He wrote the script. Bob got the script. And Bob's got the script. We're signing off on that. Let's go, Knicks.